Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era. It is time for the third tournament in our era of tournaments. It is Duel List Kingdom. This is going to be the most important tournament thrown to date, as this is the tournament that will decide who is the king of games. Pegasus is throwing this tournament on a secluded island and has said that anybody that makes it to this island is allowed to participate. We are going to be going through the list of characters that were invited or not invited but still made it to the island and we're going to find out who's going to win in today's tournament. But first, the character roundup. We're going to begin with the first character and that is Taya Gardner. Taya Gardner is the carnival runner-up. Taya Gardner was invited to Duelist Kingdom by Pegasus himself. Realizing she's about to compete in the ultimate tourney, she decides to buff up her deck for the competition. Taya Gardner is unbelievably happy right now. She has knocked out Yugi Mudo. She has proven to herself that she can overcome even the people that taught her how to play the game and is now planning on going pro. But in order to go pro, she needs to win a big tournament or at least show that she is as good as the other pro characters. And she's going to be playing against a lot of pros in this tournament. So let's see if she can do it. She got second place in the carnival tournament. And honestly, let's see if she goes farther with her new wing weaver boss monster and all of her equip spells and all the fun stuff she has in store. The next character we are going to be talking about is Suzoji Shriek, a carnival semi-finalist. Suzoji Shriek has gained great popularity at school and even got people to join his karaoke club. He received an invite to Duelist Kingdom in the middle of a meeting and his new member shrieked. That's right, everybody. There are people that have now joined the karaoke club because they're so excited to see that one of their members is a top tier duelist. Suzoji Shriek has been invited since he got in uh, he got to semifinals in the Carnival Tournament. I can't wait to see how his frog deck performs as it does have minor buffs to make it a little bit better for this tournament. This tournament in, uh, entire idea is going to be played around field spells. So now that Suzoji has access to his field spell, he'll have a much better chance at summoning and using those frogs. The next character we're going to be talking about is Damian Draco, a regional finalist. Maximilian Pegasus went to Damian Draco's house personally to thank him for defeating Kaiba. Along with his thanks, Damian received an invite to Duelist Kingdom. Draco is ready with new dragons. That's right, everyone. Damian Draco is buffing his dragon deck. His boss monsters are still the fusion monsters, but he has better basic dragons now. And not only that, Pegasus was so happy that he was able to beat him that he gets to go to Duelist Kingdom because Pegasus doesn't like Kaiba. Pegasus doesn't like the idea that Kaiba is the number one ranked duelist just because Kaiba owns the strongest monsters in the game. So he's hoping that characters like Draco can put him down again by inviting them to Duelist Kingdom. Johnny Steps, the American finalist. Johnny Steps was shocked he lost to a bunch of city folk during his time in Domino. After receiving an invitation to Duelist Kingdom, he decides he can use this opportunity to fix his reputation. Johnny Steps is a top class character. Honestly, he is a pretty interesting duelist, but he did not perform that well in the Domino, uh, well, not Domino, the Carnival Tournament. The only thing is, he is going to get a buff so that he could do a little bit better in Duelist Kingdom. Let's see if his fusion deck can do it this time around, or if Johnny Steps is going to step out of our story. Joey Wheeler, a stowaway, amateur duelist. Joey was accidentally abducted and sent to Duelist Kingdom along with Yugi. As the rules state, if you find your way to Duelist Kingdom, you may compete. Joey can't wait to participate. Joey sadly was unable to really buff his deck as he did not expect to go to Duelist Kingdom. He was actually just chilling with Yugi and Tristan when this happened to him, so yep, he's there now. Tristan Taylor, another stowaway amateur duelist. Tristan was abducted alongside with Yugi and Joey, and now they're in Duelist Kingdom. Excited to participate at the top level, Tristan decides to make the most out of his experience. That's right, everybody. Tristan Taylor did take out Joey in the other tournament, and now he has a chance to show that he is one of the best duelists ever, even though his deck doesn't really, you know give off that energy. There's still a chance Tristan might show off with the Super Robo Yaro, but it's going to take a lot of equip souls to make that happen. Diesel Kane. 
the Carnival Champion. Diesel Kane never worries about money since his win. The golden puzzle was too complicated, so he used hot glue to stick pieces of the puzzle into place. He wears the puzzle around his waist as a trophy for his victory in the tournament. That is right, everybody. Diesel Kane, not only did re he receive a promotional card, but he received a golden puzzle that he was unable to put together. So what did he do? He got all of his gang members together and they all hot glued it together. It does not look right and he wears it on his waist as a little, you know, little accessory. And it shows everyone that he is a champion. It's a symbol of his victory. And we're gonna see how he performs in today, or yeah, in today's Duelist Kingdom tournament. Panic! Panic is a dueling mercenary. Panic was paid by Pegasus to knock out competitors of Duelist Kingdom. Using a defensive fiend deck, Pan Panic is ready to prevent any and all contestants from winning the secret prize of Duelist Kingdom. That is right, everybody. There is actually going to be a secret prize behind Duelist Kingdom. And if somebody manages to beat Pegasus or one of his mercenaries, they will be able to receive that prize. If a mercenary or Pegasus wins, then no prize will be dealt out because they were paid off to not do this and one of them Pegasus. But we'll see if Panic can do it. He has a not very good deck when it comes to boss monsters or anything, but it may work against this AI since I've seen a guy attack with Treeborn Frog. So, you know, it's possible that Panic's deck will work in this place. Bones, the zombie kid, an actual ghost. Bones was once a child that lived in Duelist Kingdom. When Industrial Illusions brought the, uh, bought the island, they accidentally dropped a large boulder in a cave where Bones played. He joins the tourney to get revenge. Bones is a spirit. This is a child that once lived on the island, but while they were turning things around and changing up the island so it was tournament ready, they accidentally dropped a giant boulder on Bones. And now that that has happened, Bones is now dead. Come back from the lot. And now he's come back to life as a zombie kid. And he is going to use his zombie deck to win these duels. He's hoping that if he wins the tournament, they will have to acknowledge what happened to him. The Paradox Bros. The Dueling Mercenaries. The Paradox Brothers were hired by Pegasus to knock contestants out of Duelist Kingdom. Their two-minded combination deck has a legendary card that can even overpower Blue Eyes White Dragon. That is right, everybody. These characters use the Mighty Gate Guardian and the Three Pieces. These cards can defeat the Blue Eyes White Dragon, and if the Paradox Brothers pull this off in this tournament, they can win it all. My Valentine, ranked number four in the world. My Valentine is one of the highest ranking duelists in the world. Her Harpy deck is known for its easy ability to special summon. Duelist Kingdom is her chance to dethrone Kaiba in the world rankings. That is right, everybody. If you are able to win in the Duelist Kingdom tournament, you will be na named King of Games. If you are King of Games, that makes you the number one ranked duelist. So... Let's see if my Valentine can do that with her super fast Harpy Lady deck. It's one of the few decks with very fast special summons that deal damage. But we'll see how it performs. The next character we're going to talk about is Mokuba Kaiba, a stowaway brother of Seto. Mokuba Kaiba has decided to sneak onto Duelist Kingdom Island. They came to help Kaiba knock out contestants twice as fast and hopes to give Seto an easier tournament after Seto's loss in Domino. Yes, Mokuba Kaiba is a little worried about his big brother since his big brother did lose a lot of reputation after losing to Damian Draco. So he decides to go to the island himself and he decides that he's going to knock out as many characters as he needs to in order to make it an easier ride for Seto Kaiba. The Mimic of Doom, a dueling mercenary. Pegasus hired the Mimic of Doom to defeat the contestants in Duelist Kingdom. The Mimic relies on a power of darkness and uses deceptive cards to trick his opponents. The Mimic of Doom uses a legendary card called Doom Shaman. This card is used to special summon many of his boss monsters, and worse than that, he has a lot of Mimic cards to help him draw cards. So, we'll see if the Mimic of Doom does well in this tournament. I think his boss monster is pretty darn decent, but I will never know how they perform until we actually see them in action. So, let's go ahead and talk about our next character. Rex Raptor! This is an intercontinental finalist! Rex Raptor is known as one of the only dinosaur duelists in Duel Monsters, and that is actually a rare thing. 
His deck relies on powerful dinos, and he has buffed his deck for Duelist Kingdom with the promotional cards he's won by getting to the finals of the Intercontinental Championship and another championship from way back when, when the game first started. So, Rex Raptor is one of the only dino duelists you'll ever see in tournaments because most people don't use dinosaurs. However, his dinosaurs are pretty damn good. They pack a punch, and he's got good cards to help them get stronger. But... They are nothing compared to his legendary rare card, the Red Eyes Black Dragon, a promotional card he won by becoming a finalist in the Intercontinental Tournament. He is going to try and use this Red Eyes to win him this tournament, and I can't wait to see if he will be successful. Bakorario! Unknown Duelist. Bakora woke up on Duelist Kingdom Island. The ring around his neck is missing, and he begins to freak out. Knowing what danger lies ahead, he decides to join the tourney in order to save everyone. Bakora's missing his ring, the ring that glows around his neck all the time, has somehow teleported him to Duelist Kingdom Island, and now Bakora enters this tournament to save everyone from the ring's wrath. Mako Tsunami Fisherman? Fisherman. <laughs> Mako Tsunami was fishing near Duelist Kingdom Island when he heard all the duelists arriving. He joined the tournament to show off the cards he fished out of the ocean. That is right everybody, Mako Tsunami is a character that was not invited this time around to Duelist Kingdom. This time he's just a fisherman that happened to be nearby and decides to stop on Duelist Kingdom Island to enter the tournament. Now all of his cards are obtained from the sea, the sea is what give, gave him his deck, and hopefully he'll be able to make a splash with his rare Toriental Trip and his Kaiushin. Weevil Underwood, the Intercontinental Champion. Weevil Underwood is a big time champion. He was invited to Duelist Kingdom by Pegasus and believes this is the perfect time to test out his ultimate insect. He plans to devour Kaiba's dragons. That is right, everybody. Weevil Underwood will be participating in Duelist Kingdom, and he runs an insect deck that has a card even stronger than the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Whether or not he'll be able to summon it, I do not know. All I do know is that we should see if Weevil's deck will do well, because it is a pretty defensive deck, and AI is stupid enough to attack with 100 attack point monsters. So maybe with deflected damage alone, Weevil Underwood could be a massive threat. Shoddy. Shoddy is ranked third in the world. Shoddy is one of the three strongest duelists in Duel Monsters. His golden key has given him the ability to see whether or not his opponent deserves defeat. Shoddy has an original Millennium deck. Shoddy's deck is built around rock monsters mostly. His rock monsters are very good at getting out his boss monsters like Sengenjin, Millennium Golem, Millennium Scorpion. His Millennium deck has actually put a lot of big ca name characters to shame, and that has earned Shoddy ranked 3 in the world. And he was easily invited because the top 4 duelists were invited to this tournament. Bandit Keith, an American champion. Bandit Keith is the best duelist America has to offer. His machine deck is incredibly strong, and he earned himself the Metal Morph set to buff up his deck. He duels to become number one worldwide. Bandit Keith is one of the best duelists in the world right now. His machine deck is unmatched in terms of power, and after receiving the Metal Morph set after winning the American Championship, his cards are untouchable. His Metal Zoa is his strongest monster in terms of attack points. He owns the basic Zoa, he owns a Barrel Dragon, he has Launcher Spider, he has Slot Machine, he has the strongest cards this game has to offer. And he has the appropriate equip spells to make them stronger. So, we're going to see if Bandy Keith can win this entire tournament, or if running all of these boss monsters will brick him up a little too much. We'll find out, though, in today's turn. Yami Bakora, Unknown Origin. The Millennium Energy spiking on Duelist Kingdom Island sparked the release of spirit within, the spirit within the ring. The spirit has decided to duel in the tourney. 
so they can obtain the golden items. That is right, everybody. There are a lot of golden or millennium items converging on Duelist Kingdom Island. Because there are so many items converging there, Bakora has decided, or Yami Bakora has decided to teleport to Duelist Kingdom Island to take those items in the tournament. Set to Kaiba, the number one ranked duelist. Seto Kaiba is going to Duelist Kingdom, the Duelist Kingdom tournament. News of his loss to Damien hurt his reputation, but Kaiba seems unfazed and is prepared to go all out in this ultimate tournament. In order to solidify his rank as King of Games, the number one ranked pro duelist, Seto Kaiba seeks to win this tournament. With his legendary Blue Eyes cards, he definitely has the power advantage. And not only that, he has improved his deck with better spell trap support. And hopefully that'll be enough for Seto Kaiba to take on everybody in Duelist Kingdom, even though the people in Duelist Kingdom are the highest ranked people in, this, in the entire world. Maximilian Pegasus, our tournament host and the game's creator. Duelist Kingdom is the brainchild of Pegasus, an entire island dedicated to a tournament of the best duelists worldwide. Any duelist that finds their way to the island is automatically a contestant, which is how we have a few amateurs in our tournament today. So, Pegasus will be entering his own tournament with his Toon deck. His Toon deck is completely original and he has access to ritual monsters like Relinquish and fusion monsters like Thousand Eyes Restrict. These are the rarest cards in the game at this moment in time and we're going to see if Pegasus can use them properly to take out his own competitors so he does not have to give away the secret prize at the end of Duelist Kingdom. Yugi Muto, a small time champion. The night Yugi was abducted to Duelist Kingdom, he was having a sleepover with his pals. The goons that put Yugi on the island stole his deck. Luckily, Yugi has a spare with an ultra rare. Everybody, Yugi Muto has lost his deck. The entire deck has been taken. He lost his legendary Beast of Talwar. He lost his promotional Cosmo Queen. All he has is his backup deck that he made with Grandpa at his shop. The backup deck is made of legendary cards, but they are not as powerful as his main deck's cards. In other words, Yugi Mudo has been nerfed for Duelist Kingdom. It's kind of coming to me as a shock as well, but his new ultra rare card, the Black Luster Soldier, is definitely one of the strongest cards in the game in this time period, but it's also one of the hardest to summon. So we wish Yugi luck in this tournament. As far as AI goes, who knows what will happen, but if his new deck can do it, then that'll be great. We'll see though, we will see. There's only one competitor left in the tournament to talk about, and I think it's time we uh, get into them. Prana Tanker! Prana Tanker is ranked number two in the world. Prana was once an undefeated duelist. Using her golden scales, she was able to measure the value of her opponents. All enemies were worth nothing to her scales until she ran into Seto Kaiba. She is a character that would weigh her opponents before they even fought her, weighing their souls against her own and realizing that all of them were weaker than her, she easily defeated them all, becoming the number one ranked duelist at one point. However, it was short-lived because Seto Kaiba showed up one day, the scales tipped in his favor, and Prana realized she would have to duel at the best of her abilities. And even after dueling at the best of her abilities, she was bested. So, she comes to this tournament ranked second, a duelist that does not duel very often, and hopes to win the entire thing and become king of games. Will the Millennium Scales tip the uh, games into her favor, or... Will her opponents prove too strong? We'll find out as she uses a zombie deck. That is right, Prana Taker is a zombie user and one of her family members happens to go to Domino High School and knows about Yugi Mudo, the Domino High Champion. 
Prana is interested to see what the Domino High champ can do against a professional zombie deck like Prana has, and we're going to see exactly what they can do during today's tournament. That is it. All the Duelist Kingdom competitors have been mentioned now. The 24 character tournament will be going on. It is match style best 2 out of 3, and the winner will earn the rank of King of Games, and if anyone but the Mercenaries or Pegasus wins, they will also learn of the secret prize of Duelist Kingdom. I will see you all next time. Get ready. It is time for the tournament. I'm about to pop up live, and I'm hoping that we can have a very hype time together. Let's go. Hey there everybody and welcome to today's tournament. I'm officially live right now. While we're doing the lore stuff, all I do is I, in the background, I set up the stream itself. Uh, but I'm here. I'm hoping you can hear me. Please tell me I did that this time. I hope. <laughs> it would really suck if I messed that part up again, but I'm sure I did it. So... Are you guys excited for Duelist Kingdom? Of course, this is not the Duelist Kingdom you grew up with. This is a whole new story. This is the Master Era Duelist Kingdom. Remember, everything has changed. When it comes to our story, it's going to be dynamic. It's going to be ever-evolving. And what happens in it is just going to be, you know, what happens. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, I, I am really excited to show off these new characters. I hope that most of you were able to show up early and see all the character bios and learn new stuff about them. New, new, learn new stuff about their deck changes or whatever their new ultra rare cards may be. Um, and maybe even learn their rankings in the world and who's strongest at what. So I, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what happens. I don't know how these characters are going to react and I don't know how the hell I'm going to have to do what I'm going to have to do with the story. Because I swear to God, if someone stupid wins like Panic, I'm gonna get upset. But let's just let's just let's just hope someone cool wins. That's what I want to go for. Let's hope someone cool wins. <laughs> yeah. Um. So for those of you that missed it, I uh, will show you guys the bracket right now, so you know who's in the tournament. The bracket today is. Tristan Taylor versus Panic. Yugi Mudo got a skip. Taya Gardner versus Bones. Weevil Underwood got a skip. Suzoji Shriek versus Paradox Bros. Seto Kaiba got a skip. Damian Draco versus My Valentine. Bandit Keith got a skip. Yami Bakora versus Mokuba Kaiba. Shoddy got a skip. Johnny Steps versus Joey Wheeler. Prana got a skip. Mimic of Doom versus Rex Raptor. Diesel Kane got a skip. Bakoro Ryo versus Mako Tsunami. Maximilian Pegasus got a skip. So, looking at our competitors here today, I will tell you right now, the competitors that were not invited to this tournament, the ones that just happened to be there for one reason or another, let me tell you, or let me show you right now. The characters not invited to this tournament officially that we know of, Tristan Taylor, he was a stowaway. Uh, Bones. He actually was a person that used to live on Duel's Kingdom Island and is dead now. But he's here today to duel. Bones. Um, let's see. They're invited. Damien was invited for reasons. Uh, Mokuba Kaiba. He stuck on with, uh, with Kaiba. He's not supposed to be here. Mokuba Kaiba snuck in. Uh, Joey Wheeler. Joey Wheeler snuck in. He's not supposed to be here. And Bakora Ryo. Bakora Ryo is not supposed to be here. And anybody on the tier two list or the skip list, let's see. Oh, Yami Bakora too. Yeah, Yami Bakora. That's six people so far. Six people officially not supposed to be here. So if you knock out six characters, that's at least how much it was supposed to. Taya was invited. She got second place. She's a runner up in a big tournament, the Carnival, cha the Champions Carnival. So yeah, Taya was invited. She was the first bio, so I understand if a lot of people skipped that one or did not get to see it. But yeah, <clears throat> we got our tournament today. I'm very excited to get things going. The first duel is going to be Tristan versus Panic, so I'm going to set that up in the background. That is uh, my job after all. So let me just set that up in the background. Today's stream called, it's called Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era Duelist Kingdom. Is that not what it says in the thing? I hope it says that. I, I, I really hope it says that. If it doesn't say that, that means I forgot to change it and I'm 
I'm, I'm not I, I don't want to I don't want to deal with that right now midstream that'd make me sad all right now let's go let's go find these new characters well I guess Tristan's not new but panic is definitely new for our tournaments all right plus I'm gonna warn you right now um uh, I have no idea how the AIs are going to react to their decks. I did get to test some of these decks, but overall, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Sometimes the AI don't duel too good. It's just a sad reality. We've been watching it happen live, but at least some of it's funny. Some of it is agonizing, though, I must admit. But a lot of it is funny, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a man, I'm a man who likes a good comedy. And if my show has to become a good comedy rather than a hype series, I'll take it. I'll take whatever. Yeah. So the characters are pretty much set up already to duel. I am just going to wait until 12 o'clock when we are officially ready to start. So if you have any simple questions that you need answered because we only have five minutes, I'm here. Let me know what you want to ask. I'm right here. I, uh, I, I will do my best. I think characters like Panic and Weevil do have a decent chance in a game like this simply because I think the game um, is dumb where they make low attack point monsters attack first. So if somebody like Suzoji Shriek uses Treeborn Frog to attack, say, a Castle of Dark Illusions, that's a lot of life points just gone. All right, let's see. Quick funny story, Mokuba's ace monster, JR, you got an evolved form. I did not know that. Oh, it's the Starry Night Dragon from my Let's Play. I remember that card. I had to fight that. Why well, no Mr. Clown? He's not high ranked at all. Mr. Clown has no high ranking in the world. He's just a game shop owner. So, how was your week? Great week. Yeah. Great week indeed. Don't forget to check the top of Lavender Tower once you find the fifth. Thank you. I do need to remember that. I do need to remember that. How long are you thinking this series will go? Forever. Forever. For the rest of your lives. However short those lives are. For the rest of your lives. It's gonna, it's gonna keep going. I could just keep making crap up. Granted, this one seems more interesting. I'm, I'm actually excited about today. Today, I felt pretty excited. Except, I understand if some people are mad the way I decided to treat Diesel Kane with how he got the puzzle and stuff. But I found it funny. I thought it was funny. So, hopefully, you guys are okay with that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the people that made it to see Diesel Kane's profile thought it was at least funny. Uh, Miss Chona was not added because even though she was a finalist, she was the finalist of a very small tournament. Normally, Damian Draco would not be added as well. Damian Draco uh, only was added because Pegasus saw him defeat Kaiba and was like, I want that guy in my tournament. I want someone to defeat Kaiba. Yeah. I hope you have fun at the birthday party later today. Oh, you missed the Kane profile? Darn. Darn, that's a shame. I don't have enough time to explain. I'm just I'm just gonna have to let you guys sit there. Yeah. Just know that um yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Remember, if you wanna see these bios in time, you just gotta show up at eleven thirty AM and then you're good from now on. Because every tournament should be starting around that time. As long as the tournament's not massive and oh my god, I swear to god. I have to make sure the tournaments are not too big. Because the bios barely fit. <laughs> they barely fit within the time period. Like this one we had 9 minutes of extra time because it was a short tournament. But we're getting close to the, the limit here. Alright. Ah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I'm ready to start this tournament, so... It's not quite ready. We're not. We're not. We're not there just yet. You guys got maybe a few minutes left before I officially start. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and skip ahead two minutes. But um, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you're watching this live. You're the good people. Anyone that's here live, you get my respect. So we're gonna see Yami Diesel Kane. Who knows? We have to see where the story takes us. Is Raphael still stuck on the island? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm afraid. Will you add more cards, Mestral updates uh, with them? I I have no do uh, idea if that'll work. I I don't know. Um, I don't know if this thing I'm doing will update <laughs> the way I make the game work. How does this uh, progression series work? Simple. simple. We just have tournaments. I make up what's going to happen. And then based on who wins the tournaments decides how the story changes. Simple as that. Simple as that. I really hope there's a character start ramping up a bit because I was tired of normal monsters. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. That's happening. And today's tournament, too. This, today's tournament, too. It's not just going to be normal monster stuff. This might be the last tournament where we have to worry about just normal monster stuff. Uh, I love Sonic Unleashed, uh, but I really don't like the Unleashed section, so I probably won't Let's Play it. 
are going to Battle City. Who knows? We might have more tournaments before Battle City. Who knows where we're going? I don't know. Um, if you are here, my buddy Boldmans, uh, I think it's time to do predictions. Let's do Tristan versus Panic. Uh, that'll be the first one. Thank you, buddy. Uh, and we'll see what happens. You have played Okami? I love Okami. My favorite... I, I actually watched a Let's Play of Okami. My favorite Let's Player is Chuck Okomroy. He has a beautiful Let's Play of Okami. I'd say go watch it. All right. It looks like it's just about time to start this tourney, everybody. Let's do it. It is time. Let us go. I'm going to go uh, put this on your screen right now. It's time for Panic versus Tristan Taylor in the opening duel of Duelist Kingdom. Panic is a dueling mercenary hired by Pegasus to knock people out of his tournament so that he does not have to give away the secret prize he promised. And we're going to see how he duels with his deck. Thank you so much, Cody Bieber. And Pot O'Gree kicks in. Pot O'Gree gives him some decent cards and he sets up. All right. The boss monster in his deck is this King of Yami Makai. I know it's not very powerful looking, but it, it's his card. MST is only going to be able to hit one of those traps. It hits trap hole. Good hit. Honestly, a good hit. Now, let's see if he goes for two monsters because there's traps. Oh, we got Dark Chimera. Not a good card, but it's what he owns, so we got to live with it. He should have saved that Fiend Energy, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's fine. Losing your Mystic Tomato, that'll thin out your deck. If anything... Your opponent just helped you by way- Oh, he got Reaper of the Cards! Ha! I didn't know he would use Mystic Tomato that way. That's funny. Dude, he got Re Reaper of the Cards. Are you serious? Suicide Squad, get out of here. We're trying to watch a duel here. Oh, my God. All right. Well, we got ourselves a set. Reaper of the Cards is on the field. And we got a good old-fashioned witty phantom. All right. And there we go. Even if you found them cool, Bernog, they don't have any placements that matter, so they were not able to go to this tournament. This tournament's too high ranking for them. Trust me, there's going to be some characters we love, but if they perform poorly, we'll never see them again. All right, and boss monster time, King of Yami Makai. It looks like duel number one is in the hands of Panic. Tristan Taylor is playing horribly, which makes sense. He's, a st he's not even supposed to be here. Like, he's just a stowaway that made it here, thanks to uh, the abductors not knowing who to take. So they just took everybody. Alright, here we go. Panic is looking real strong. He's going for game-winning attack, and Panic takes game number one. If you voted for Panic the Dueling Mercenary, you knew what to do. Uh, you knew who to bet on. His Reaper of the Cards, his Witty Phantom, and of course, his King of Yami Makai will take it. But that was only game one. Let's go into game two instantly. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Place your bets. Will Tristan Taylor make a comeback a reality, or will Panic continue to scare his opponent to... Mm, I'm not allowed to use that word. To unalive. <laughs> I have to be careful. People are getting... Uh, Twitch and YouTube are getting mad at me. All right. Oh, don't worry. That'll be explained much later, Lubo Link. All right. There we go. We got ourselves Yellow Luster Shield. That is all well and good. And we got a sheep. Sheeps are good. Nope, you attacked with the weaker monster. I'm telling you, Panic and Weevil are going to do good because defensive decks do better in Master Duel because they're dumb enough to attack with weaker monsters. I am curious how that's going to work out, though, for them. So, are you going to attack that monster with the weaker monster or are you going to fuse? Oh, Dekoichi. I, I would have... Oh, you're going to reinforcements. That didn't even work. They're not even going to let you reinforcements. Panic's like, nah. Nah, you'll take more deflective damage than I'll take burn damage. And he's not wrong. That, that, that is... Oh, actually, they're tied. That's hilarious. All right, both these characters are tied. Neither one can take the lead right now. Because, oh, nope. He was just waiting to get his boss, and that's what he does. And Panic now has the almighty king of Yami Makai. And with this, he could defeat the Cyber Falcon or Dekoichi. He took Dekoichi. And now it's all up to uh, our buddy here to see what he could do. Tristan Taylor is not doing very good at this tournament. Makes a lot of sense. And Cyber Falcon will at least get rid of one card. Tristan Taylor, I feel bad for you. You didn't have time to buff your deck. You didn't know you'd be here. And, ooh, Reaper of the Cards. It's going to be hard to get that one out. And we're going to take that card out, too. 
Oh, that's okay. I feel like it sucks in, in a lot of cases that they attack with a lower attacking monster. But it's okay in some cases because that means that worse characters can play better in my tournament. And it looks like he's finally done it. Tristan Taylor has bought enough time to get his boss monster. And his boss monster is stronger than Panic's by 200. And Panic's boss monster has been destroyed. And you just did 600 damage. Yeah, okay. It's fine. He has Super Robo Yar now. He can win the duel now. Tristan has an advantage. So, let's see what uh, our buddy here is going to do. That is not a bad play, actually. That is a very smart play. It's just not going to be... Oh, is it going to be enough? It's going to be enough. I like that. Trap Hole gets rid of Cyber Falcon. No need to deal with that. I agree. Uh, Super Robo Yaro is going to switch out for some unknown reason. That was a horrible use of your Robo Yaro. You just took 1,230 damage. And your Trap Card is gone. All right. Good job, Reaper of the Cards. All right. Reaper of the Cards has done it. Monster Aborn, very good idea to use that. Monster Aborn kicks in. King of Yami Bakai, Super Robo Lady does not have the good effect. She has the attack directly effect. Go get her. And it looks like Panic is going to take advantage of Tristan's inability to understand his boss monster. Which is fine, because he did use it properly in the first tournament when he used it to attack directly. He just did horribly right now. That was a very bad use of his monster. Reaper of the Cards has been summoned in two duels now, and it's going to win him two duels now. And we got Mystic Tomato. So, Robo Lady is gone. This duel is over. Tristan, get out of Duelist Kingdom. You weren't supposed to be here anyway. The winner is Panic, the Dueling Mercenary. You know how embarrassing it would have been if Panic lost the first duel to Tristan? Like, just how sad that sounds. Like, hey, Panic, what happened? Oh, I lost to this kid. <laughs> he wasn't even supposed to be there. and <laughs> He's not even good. All right, so looking at our bracket, Panic will move forward. The next duel is Taya Gardner versus Bones, the actual ghost. For those of you that missed the opening, Taya Gardner will be taking on Bones. Bones is an actual ghost of a child, or a zombie kid of a child, that was on the island and was killed by a giant rock when they were moving stuff around for the tournament. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see if he can win the duel against Taya so he could get to Pegasus, so he could force Pegasus to... You know, acknowledge what he's done for money. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start this duel. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it on your screens real soon. I just need like two seconds, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get it going. I just gotta find Bones and Taya real quick, and then we will get this going. All right, let's freaking go. It is time for oh, that's not working. Whoops, I pressed the wrong button. Ignore ignore me. That's fine. Old Cooper's having a little bit of trouble setting this up for some reason. There we go. And there we go. It's Bones versus Taya. Now, Taya was invited. Bones was not. He's a zombie kid, so he gets to be here. He was already on the island. And it looks like Zombie Kid's got a 2,000 attack point monster. That is A-OK. -okay. So, Taya, what's your answer to a 2,000 attack point monster? The friendship. I like the friendship. This, the the mus muzzler? Nuzzler? Nuzzler. There we go. Well, it looks like both of them have lost their equip spells. But Taya's going to gain the ability to draw a card from this. Alright. Oh, she's going to draw Malevolent Nuzzler. Funny enough, she will have her equip spell right back. So, Taya just took a thousand burn, and her monster is not defensive enough to protect her. The Shining Friendship is adorable, but not quite strong enough. But we'll see what happens. Graceful Charity, let's see if he can get some better cards. No, she will not allow it. He's bricked now. By throwing away the Malevolent Nuzzler, he is bricked and he is in trouble. All right, Taya Gardner is taking advantage of the duel. And Trap Hole, the flip summon his costume. And Call the Haunted, that's one of his best cards and it's what he's known for. Call the Haunted comes through and he is able to take over. If she's unable to get, because she threw away her equip spell, if she's unable to get a monster that could beat 15, she's in danger. All right, like I said, she's probably in danger. That's no good. All right, here we go. We got Dragon Zombie. That's one of Bones' strongest cards in the tournament, and he's using it to take Taya down. All right, not bad, not bad. Taya, you need monsters with equip spells. You need to draw your equip spells already. Oh, that's worse than I thought. Taya didn't draw anything. Now, let's see if... Uh... Yeah. No, that trap is useless. Taya's having a really bad hand right now. I don't know what's happening to her. Maybe she's getting some pre-tournament, or no, some early tournament jitters. She's scared. Yep, she is. She is. Bad hand. Bad hand from Taya. 
It looks like the end of the duel. Castle of Dark Illusions for funsies. Yeah, I love funsies. And Waboku will stall for one turn. Waboku will stall. Will she draw? Maybe she drew a quiff spell. She's waiting on a monster. Let's see if she can get a monster. She got Thunder Nyan Nyan is dead! She got a monster, but it does not matter! She loses it, and she is going down! Take her down, Bones! Go get her! Castle of Dark Illusions goes in, Dragon Zombie goes in, Game 1 goes to Bones. Taya was unable to keep up a front row, where her opponent had a good back row to protect his front row. Alright, great duel, great duel. So, let's see if Taya will do a little bit better. She is one of the people that was invited here. Bones was not invited here, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I would have liked the clown ending, but I'm happy with what happened. I like to see my buddy Bones do well. Alright, Shining Angel's a good start from Taya. She ran out of monsters last time, so that'll help her this time. I like that. He got his boss. Ooh, I love this. Let's take a peek at it. That's the pumpkin. Ah, oh, Fisher was good. That was a well use of, uh, good use of Fisher right there. All right, there we go. This is the hardest tournament. This is the biggest tournament right now, so it makes sense if Taya falls. It just feels bad. All right, 600 damage. It's looking so good. They can go all the way to Pumpkin if they want, or if they draw another monster, I'd say some of the second monster. I Yeah, definitely. That's 3,000 damage. Hell yeah. All right, my buddy Bones is putting Taya on the freaking edge of life right now. What can Taya do? She has already lost some of her best cards to Back Row and Fisher. So what do you do, Taya? Taya gets one of her new cards, Element Magician. Or Valkyrie, sorry, Valkyrie. Element Valkyrie. Who's the Magician? Someone else owns the Magician. Ignore me. But it's not strong enough to take on Dragon Zombie, and there's no Elements here, so that's not going to help out. Call of the Haunted. Mystic Tomato is back. He's going for game. He's going for game. He's got Pumpkin. The boss monster is here. Waboku says no. She bought herself a turn to get a quip spell. She has tons in her deck. We're just not seeing any, which blows my mind. What is he going for? Castle! What a play! He was smart enough to get Castle to buff Pumpkin. I love that. Granted, she might just kill the castle out of fear, but still. Oh, she got a monster! It's her Dark Witch! It's her Elf Slight! Her monster is here! It's not her boss anymore, but her mini boss is here. And she takes down the buffing card, making it so Pumpkin doesn't get crap. I love it. I love it. Good job, Taya. All right, here we... No, block attack! It's the best card in the game! Block attack comes through. Mirror Force! She held it back! She knew she would need it! And now she is still in the duel! She was about to lose! Block attack is one of the best cards ever created, but guess what? Mirror Force is better. And there we go with Dark Witch. 2200 damage goes in. And Taya Gardner is in the lead. There's only one Mirror Force in the tournament in general. And it is on her deck, and she only has one, and we got to see it at the last moment, right before she got knocked out. And Shine Palace, why not? Let's make this monster super strong. Can't use your, your clown's effect if it can't go back to attack mode. Unlucky for this man. Another block attack would actually help, though. That card's not bad either, but not against this monster. Block attack should be banned. It should at least be limited, right? <laughs> Okay. Oh, we got Thunder Nyan Nyan. Thunder Nyan Nyan goes in and 29 goes in. If anyone missed her early bio today, she has buffed her deck for this tournament after she was invited personally by Pegasus. Wasteland. It's a little late for that to matter. It would have been nice earlier when he had Pumpkin. And it looks like she's done it with her ultra powerful mini boss, Dark Witch. Taya takes game number two. She is nobody's fool. She barely comes back in this duel, and it was hype as crap. Now let's go ahead and get into game three. Both of these characters are decently powerful. Both have comeback mechanics, just like Call of the Haunted, just like Mirror Force. But who will take it in game number three? Who is going to continue in the Duelist Kingdom tournament and have a chance at the title of King of Games? The winner of the tournament officially becomes number one ranked Pro Duelist King of Games. Alright, so how are we going to do this? We're gonna I would have started with the clown, but you do you. Dragon Zombie is really strong though, so I guess that's fine. Pato Greed. Main of the Moonlight is not strong enough, but he still knows that she runs equip spells and uses that to his advantage. Good play. Good play. Let's see what else he gets. Ooh, that's really good. That is really good. 2100 attack. That is amazing. She takes a heap of damage this turn. Almost half her life points are gone. Brutal turn. Absolutely brutal. 
So what are you gonna do now, Taya? You're like one turn away again. Monster Reborn, okay, yeah, yeah, things are getting desperate. Maybe go for Dark Witch again. Dark Witch was pretty damn decent. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Dark Witch into a Shine Palace. That's what I'm talking about. Into an Elf's Light again. Into an Elf's Light again. 3,300 attack. That Dragon Zombie be damned. You just better hope he never draws block attack. Do not draw block attack. That's all I ask of you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Ah, that's a good card too, actually. All right. Taya Gardner definitely has field advantage, but she has to be careful. Oh, that's not the wrong clown. He definitely has that clown. He has both. And there goes the Crass Clown. And 14 goes through. It's not going anywhere. All right. Not going anywhere. Armored Zombie. Okay. You have to set it for your field. I think, but I, I agree, Total Drama. I think Bones is dead. I, I think he's going He's going back. Thunder Nyan Nyan is a very nice card. I love that. Thunder Nyan Nyan, a Mono Grease. And 3,700 damage. One turn away. Taya is one turn away from knocking out a zombie kid who did really well today, but uh, this this might be too big of an opponent. Well, Boku, she's playing for Keith. She's like, no, I'm not losing over half my life points. I'm going to win with over half in game number three. That is game. It looks like anyway, unless, unless there's something I don't know about, like the AI blows itself up because it's an idiot. 3,700 direct damage. Taya Gardner continues in the Duelist Kingdom Tournament. Bones, the zombie kid, may never get his piece. What a shame. Still a fun duel, though. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our bracket. Taya Gardner has done it. The next duel is going to be Suzoji Shriek, the semi-finalist of the ch uh, Champions Carnival. That is the reason why they got here. They were invited. Suzoji Shriek was invited. Paradox Brothers was also paid to be here to knock out competitors. So let's see if they can knock out the frog guy. I'm kind of curious about that, if, he, if they actually could. Because the frog guy is, like, deceptively good. Like, he, is ma he makes some really stupid mistakes here and there. But overall, he's a pretty good duelist, and that's why you got to watch yourself around him. All right, let's go ahead and get this next duel started. I'm just going to make sure I get all the faces in order, because I always forget to do that. Um, yeah, I just need like two seconds, just like two measly seconds, and I'll, I'll get this started. All right, there we go. Para is there, and who's the other one? That's the Zoji Shriek. Well, let's go ahead and start this duel. You guys can't see it, can you? There you go. All right, so Zoji Shriek versus the Paradox Brothers. Let's see what happens. This is an interesting hand from the Paradox Brothers. It could evolve into something really good if he gets the right card. Nope, he did not. If he had gotten the right card, that could have been very good. Let's see how the Frog deck deals with this. All right, Bielza Frog is better after you already lose your Tadpoles, but by itself, it's not so good. In fact, it's just a bad card. For this one, it's Para. If they're on the other side, it's Dox. That's interesting. Okay, he has the combo in his hand, but obviously, he has Monster Advantage, so he doesn't need to do that. All right, there we go. What, did the predictions not go through for Teo? They already went through, I'm afraid. Yeah, we can't start a new prediction until the other predictions already, uh... Yeah, until the prediction's already gone through. Yeah. So, let's see what happens here. Fisher, nice. Okay, Cannon Soldier, nice. Uh, Treeborn Frog wanted to die, you fool. You fell into their trap. Granted, Suzoji's not doing so good. Okay, Cannon Soldiers are being wasted. AI is AI. What are you gonna do? And let's see what happens. Bielza Frog still too weak. Why is it in attack? Is it bait? Is it bait? Wait, but no, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. The attack goes through. It was bait. Never mind. The opponent didn't know either. Yeah, I would have used uh, one of those combos in the hand. Fisher is a weird usage now, but whatever. Okay, so you finally have advantage. You have a Treeborn Frog. You could tribute for Death Frog if you own one. You don't. You have Mother Grizzly. Mother Grizzly's fine. That's a safe card. I like that. I like that. Well, the good thing about it is if you show up to Twitch late, you can still watch the intros on YouTube. Because I still release it on YouTube. 
Ooh, Gate Guardian. Up, oh, he threw away one of his combos. Up, oh, tribute to the Doom. Up, oh, there goes Labyrinth Wall. Up, oh, okay, there goes Mother Grizzly. I guess it's still good to get rid of that. Yeah, he's a little bricked. Their deck is known to brick. Oh, we do have a tribute. It is Death Frog. There's no tadpoles in the grave, so no worries there. 1900 damage comes through. Let's see if uh, old Para can get a little, or Paradox can get a little bit luckier. Uh, that's not bad. That's a decent monster. It's not good enough, but, you know, it's not that bad. Treeborn Frog comes back in case they have another Death Frog in their hand. Nope, but they got Screech. Screech is good. I hate the AI sometimes. He has no life points left. This, duel's, this duel could end. After that dumb play, if this man top decks a monster with 1500 attack, he wins. He draws. He... Ah, oh, it's level 5! No! Are you serious? Are you serious? You only had to draw a 1500 attack boy monster, and you did not. Sajoji, Sajoji Shriek has taken down Para in the first duel. All right, game number one goes to Sazoji Shriek. Let's see what happens in game number two. I mean, he was invited. Unlike Tristan, he was invited, so he's supposed to be harder. But Paradox Brothers has a really good freaking deck, so I'm surprised. I know it breaks. I know it breaks. But when you get one of his better cards like Jirai... He, there it is, like Jirai Gumo. How do the characters counter Jirai Gumo when it's just that powerful? All right, Jirai Gumo is here. 22 goes in. Let's see their luck stat. Their luck stat is... Good. Good good choice. All right, Tadpoles are going to the hand now, so they never run out of cards. Yep, there we go. Now, at least they'll have monsters to hold back Jirai Gumo and waste their chances and maybe make them do half damage to themselves. Jar of Greed could help. He could have made Dual Shadow. He just chose not to. Probably because La Labyrinth Wall has zero attack, and that's going to be hard to get the opponent to play a zero attack more monster face up. All right, Jirai Gumo goes in again. A little bit risky. I would have played Unshaven Angler, but you do you. Heads, let's see if that was the right choice. It was. Poison Draw Frog, very good card. You got to love those car ads. And King of the Swamp gets set. And those Dunkin' Donut ads. Bielza Frog is here. It has been buffed, and it will destroy that card. Is this a bait? Is there a trap card? Oh, there might be a trap card. This might be a bait. All right. Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed gets Suijin. Oh, man. Oh, man. If he gets Suijin, it's over. He did it. One of the pieces of Gate Guardian has been summoned. How are you going to ever defeat that? How will you ever defeat the Suijin? Oh, you are going down. Looks like Suzoji's in a lot of trouble this time around. He's got to figure a way to defeat this powerful monster. All right. I'm curious to see how he figures this out. Tadpole is dead, as it's supposed to be. And Sajoji Shriek... Uh, sorry, Sajoji Shriek is starting to yell. He's in so much trouble. I'm feeling like the Paradox Brothers may have this one. All he needed was Jirai Guma. That card is so busted in a tournament like this. All right, Arsenal Summoner. He looks like he's trying to set up for game. Tadpole is dead. That's 41... Uh, 41? Yeah, 4,100 4, damage. Um, so close to ending this duel. Sajoji Shriek is on the last leg. He has no combos in his hand. He has a huge hand, just no combos. Bielsa Frog is max power. It is just strong. He is just strong enough with all the tadpoles in the grave. Umi surprisingly buffs almost everybody on the field. But he knows, at least the AI knows, he can't attack Suijin. He cannot attack Suijin. That is one of the strongest frogs I've ever seen in my life. I love it. Kaizijin's here now. Oh, did you just waste your Suijin? Okay, well, even though you had Tribute Doll, you wasted Suijin. Good to know that we're never going to see Gate Guardian. Good to know. Well, well, actually, they do run Call of the Haunted and Premature and all that stuff, so maybe. All right. Oh, now you got Sangha. Don't, don't do it. All right. Screech dies, which actually is what he wanted. I guarantee it. Because now he can throw away Treeborn and stuff. And look at... Oh, wait. That's not... Okay, let's just, let's just ignore it. It's fine. It's fine. Sangha is the strongest, at least, out of all of them. And with them in the grave, they're easier to summon thanks to Call of the Haunted, Monster Aboard, Premature Burial. He could fuse right now. It wouldn't matter, though. Yeah, even he knows it wouldn't matter because a machine monster would get nerfed in the Umi. Both characters have to play kind of safe. No character do knows what to do here. Now, obviously, most characters, in fact, almost all characters have access to a card like Fisher, Tribute to the Doom, um, 
some form of destructive card, so we'll see if that happens. Or we'll see or for his case, he might he might get a Des Croaking off if he gets enough time. But we'll see what happens here. Oh no, he's got Wall Shadow in his deck. He just won't play it, apparently. Dungeon Worm. Yeah, trivia your song up for Dungeon Worm. I dare you. Screech dies. Uh, if this had to go to deck out, just out of curiosity. Just out of curiosity. 23, 18. Oh, wow. So Zoji loses. If it just had to. I'm just saying. No, no, no. Cards to make your opponent attack aren't exactly in existence this old in Yu-Gi-Oh. Olden days of Yu-Gi-Oh don't really have any A. Hey, you must attack me cards. Jirai Gumo strong, but not strong enough. All right, Bielza Frog goes through, and goodbye, Jirai Gumo. Do you play Fisher already? Let's find out. We could check the grave in this game. Thank God. Uh, no, he's only played Monsters in a Jar of Greed, so he still has access to his Fisher, and he's been drawing a lot, so he'll probably get it soon. Yeah. Or his Tribute to the Doom, or his, like, like I said, every character has some form of destruction. Yeah. He has Stop Defense. That's what he had in his hand, Stop Defense. All right, Cannon Soldier wins the duel! Paradox has done it! Paradox has taken down Suzoji Shriek. That's all he had to wait for. That's all he needed. And there we go. The Paradox Brothers have won. All right. All right, all right. Cannon Soldier has done it. Wait, was that game one or two? That was game two, right? That duel was so long, I actually don't remember. Holy crap. Holy crap. That was game two. Okay, so it's over. Goodbye. Goodbye, Suzoji Shriek. You've been knocked out. Oh, no, wait. Did he win the first duel? It's one to one? Okay, good. Thank God. Thank God. So we're going to game three. That's one to one. Predictions go. Sorry, brain. Brain no worky so good. Yeah, I have problems. I have actual problems. I haven't figured them out, though. Yeah, I forgot. Suzoji did win the first duel. I just because he didn't get Jirai Gumo in the first duel. So that was a good duel. Good game with game number two. That's a good hand. That is a very good hand. Holy crap. It got a little better with Jirai Gumo. And we're reviving the song. Yeah, no, this is... Oh, man, is this a good hand. Holy crap. He even has Call of the Haunted. Oh, my God. Graceful, you're going to need it. You're going to need it, Suzoji. He's going to give you the hardest duel of your life. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Let's see who wins. Mystic Tomato versus uh, Mother Grizzly. Uh, Mr. Tomato gets Cannon Soldier. Mother Grizzly gets Screech. Screech wins. Okay, there you go. The winner of the, the search is going to be you. Good job. Yeah, Paradox Brothers are looking strong. They could fish her to make sure the opponent doesn't get anything. Trap Hole, so Screech can't throw stuff away. Call the Haunted. Uh, I would have saved it, but you know. It, oh, no, but it didn't matter. Actually, it would not have mattered. So there you go. Thousand Burn to make sure that monster doesn't come back. But now you are you know your opponent has no back row, so you could do whatever you want. Nope, you're just going to attack? Okay, why not? All right. Death Frog is in the grave? That's fine. He only needs uh, he only needs two and a monster born, right? Let's see what happens. Treeborn Frog, we already knew this would happen. Treeborn Frog is here now. And that is all he could do. He has no monsters to set. He has nothing. Oh, boy. It's getting worse by the second. Mystic Tomato is here. 2,600 goes in. Is Suzoji Shriek already going to get knocked out? Granted, he's only here because he was a semi-finalist, which is not exactly the best thing to say, but hey, it's still pretty cool. Trueborn Frog is here. Monster Born is here. Mother Grizzly over Death Frog. I don't agree, but uh, you know what? It does stall. It does stall. I can do that. Yeah, it's lo it looks like he's going for stall. I guess I can understand that. I guess I can. Premature Burial, Jirai Gumo, Brain Control. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I freaking knew it. Oh, and Fisher. Oh, he's going. He's going for game. He's going for game. He's trying to end this duel right now. Bielsa Frog didn't stand a chance. And it looks like the duel is over. The Paradox Brothers lost the first, but they won game three. And that's all that matters. Paradox Brothers are going to town. So far, two of the dueling mercenaries um, have succeeded in knocking competitors out of the tournament. So not a bad job done by them. Not a bad job. So, we're going to now go into our bracket and see who's up next. It's time for Damian Draco to take on the world's fourth-ranked duelist, My Valentine. So, let's go ahead and see what happens between these two characters. 
Damian Draco and My Valentine. Who would you guys vote for out of these two? Damian Draco is here by personal invitation. My Valentine is as well, but hers is because she is for ranked fourth in the world. All right, even though we've never seen her duel. Both of these characters have pretty good decks, though, especially since Damian buffed himself up for Duelist Kingdom. All right, My Valentine... I'm just having a small amount of trouble. The smallest amount of trouble finding her deck. There she is. All right, we're good to go. I am just about ready to start this duel. I'm hoping you guys are placing your bets while you have the chance. All right, all right. I hope you guys are. Do not waste this opportunity. And I am just about ready to start this duel between my Valentine and Damian Draco. Between these two characters, I say Mai has the advantage because she's one of the few characters in this game with constant special summons, which is very nice. And uh, we've already seen one of her family members duel, you know, a distant cousin in Domino High's tournament. So we'll see if, uh, you know, she can do it too. That's a great hand from Damian Draco. He already has his boss monster in the opening hand. And he did not summon it. He had his boss, and he d he just threw it away, basically. I mean, he could still make it, but still. And, yes, that buffing card actually works for both of them, so it's funny enough that Mountain might not work out here. Alright, here we go. You could still use it. Okay, at least he's smart enough to still get his boss monster. And now you're in trouble. Uh, my Valentine, because you just buffed up his strongest card. Here it comes. It's the Kaiser Dragon. Damian Draco's boss, and it's going to be at 3,000 attack. It would scare a Blue Eyes at this point. Harpy's Brother's good, but it just could not do it. So, what are you going to do, my Valentine? You're in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, yeah, you're in a lot of trouble here. All right, well, we got a Mass Dragon here. Mass Dragon. Okay, at least she got a stall card. Flying Kamikiri. Let's see if she uses it properly, though. She does. She did summon our Flying Kamikiri. Lots of damage dealt, but now, if she has the card, it might be worthwhile. Faith Bird. Nothing wrong with that. Faith Bird is a powerful card. It can hold the field. It can keep you safe. Everyone needs to feel safe. Uh, Mass Dragon may not be worth killing. I'm just going to say it my Valentine because it's just going to do this. Yeah, exactly. Now you see the problem. Uh, my Valentine might be in a lot of danger, but we'll see what happens. We might even get to see Black Dragon Jungle King. No need. Three monster advantage. And goodbye, Faith Bird. And goodbye, Blue Wing Crown. Oh, boy. It looks like my Valentine's in a lot of trouble. She wasn't expecting this. Damian Draco is doing really good against ranked characters. He beat rank number one Kaiba. Can he beat rank number four, my Valentine? All right, 3,000 goes in, and Mirwall does not save the day. It's too much damage. She got it one turn too late. She drew her Mirwall one turn too late, and that is going to be game, everybody. Game number one goes to Damian Draco. This man is really good against the pros, I must say. Of all the characters, he is the one that's taking out the pro characters. All right. Damian has potential. He really does. This, there's a reason Pegasus let him in here. He's like, you know, Damien, you don't really have a good world, world record. You haven't drawn anything crazy yet, but you beat Kaiba. And that's all I needed to see. All right, that's a great hand from Damien Draco. Great hand. Graceful Charity could be good, though. Um, and it looks like we're just going to have a set. Okay, nothing wrong with that. That could be good for both players. Mountain, there we go. Funny enough that both these players do but get buffed by Mountain. Birdface! Ooh, that's one of her better cards. Okay, okay. This is definitely one of her better cards. Let's see if she can get some use out of it. Harpy's Brother! All right, Harpy's Brother, bird face, fun all around. You want to see what she threw away? No problem. Let's take a look. All equip spells. She threw away two equip spells, which I guess she didn't think she needed. But seeing his hand, she's going to need it. Because he has his mini boss monster in his hand. He has two of them, actually. And here it comes! The Black Dragon Jungle King! And Harpy's brother didn't stand a chance. It needed an equip spell, but she threw a Gust, uh, gust Fan away. So what are you going to do now? Are you going to play defensively like a coward? That's right. She's in a bad spot, I have to admit. Losing those equip spells is going to cost her. 
Now he's got Mirage Dragon. Things are getting really dicey. At least she's able to get a Harpy Lady card. She gets a Harpy Lady, if that makes sense. And Flying Kamikiri could stall out. That's fine, too. You know, just slowly, you know, summon some stuff. Yeah, Faith Bird, why not? Damian Draco is doing really good. He can actually knock out the fourth-ranked character right now. Oh, no, Garuda into... Whoa. Oh, I know what that card is. That's her boss. That is 100% her boss. And it is Harpy's Pet Dragon, which has just enough defense to hold the field. Two Black Dragon Jungle Kings are trying to scare her, but he is just tanky enough. Or she is just tanky enough. And now, with Harpy's Pet Dragon, she is literally going to hold on for dear life. And hope that he never gets anything. The attack goes through. Harpy Lady dies. Damn. Waste of a Harpy Lady. Granted, she has, a card to re she has cards to bring it back, but still. All right, let's see here. Harpy Lady into Elegant Egotist. Oh, shit. Into Harpy's Pet Dragon. Beautiful, but if you can't keep your Harpy Ladies alive, you're going to pay the price. Also, playing that card in defense mode was kind of foolish, but whatever. Yep, you're going to pay the price. If both Harpies die, you're going to die. All right, the attacks go through. Goodbye, Harpy Lady. Goodbye, Harpy Lady. Yep. Here it comes. MST to guarantee this works. Oh, it was just seven tools. And now your Harpy's Pet Dragon is worthless. He is the... Damian Draco is really good at using dragons, and he's proving it today. That is great. Nope, it needs wind and fire. And wind is the reason why he got his effect off. And here we go. Mai is dead. Is the... Is she actually just going to leave this tournament? She's getting another Harpy Lady. Does she even have any more? I was going to say, does she even have any more? There's three in the grave. There are three Harpy Ladies in the grave. One, two, three. They're all gone. She has no more Harpy. She has no more Pet Dragon. All she's got is a Blue Wing Crown and a Dream. A Blue Wing Crown and a Dream is all she has. No back row, no nothing. Damien Draco, do it, man. Go all in. That's it. It's so close, but it's it's like, how does she come back? How does she come back? I can't see a single comeback. What, she gets a trap card? She, he has freaking Heavy Storm. There's nothing she can do. All of her best cards are gone. She gets Pot of Greed, at least. Flying Kamakiri comes through to kill that card, but at the same time, what do you do? No back row. It's over. My Valentine gets knocked out immediately. A fourth ranked pro duelist gets knocked out by Damian Draco with his best thing is that he's a regional finalist. Get him out of here. All right, get her out of here. Draco is actually good. All right, I like this kid. This kid this kid's got the stuff. All right. So, Damian Draco gets to move forward in our tournament. The next duel is a scary one. We have Yami Bakora, a brand new character in our tournaments. He's using a brand new deck you guys have never seen before. Yami Bakora. Let's see if I can find these characters. And Bakora is going to be going up against Moku Bakaiba, a child that snuck onto the island. He was not invited. Both these characters were not invited. He snuck onto the island to help his brother knock out competitors so it'd be easier for Kaiba. Yeah, he's just trying to help his bro. He's a good bro. He's just trying. He's just trying. Will he be successful? I don't know. He's going up against a really hard opponent. But, you know, maybe Mokuba's got a good deck too. We don't know. We'll find out together. All right. Let me uh, get their faces on real quick, and then we are going to start this duel. So I hope you guys have already uh, placed your bets while you had the chance. If you didn't, I will not mind anyway. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, let me go ahead and see... It looks like our competitors are ready to start dueling. Let's freaking go. All right. Let us do it. Here we go. The opening duel is Yami Bakora versus Mokuba Kaiba. Let's see how these characters duel against each other. I like... Oh, Mokuba has a very bad opening hand. That is crazy. All right. There is no Yami Yugi. Graceful Charity comes through. And we're going to throw away some cards. He does not want to run Chain Energy because apparently he feels like he has what he needs. He doesn't need to burn his opponent down. 1,900 damage. And he's going to set that card up. We have ourselves Magical Thorn. There we go. And Heavy Storm is amazing. That is a good use of Heavy Storm. They both hit Black Pendant, funny enough. But Mokuba, you need to show off what your deck has. 
I know you have some interesting cards in your deck. That's a good card, but you have interesting. There we go. Here we are. We got ourselves the Grey Wing. All right. Here we go. Grey Wing is good. Gross Ghost is at least defensive. It can hold it back, though. Interesting. He doesn't want to go for Manny or Bow. I guess this isn't that scary. He just wants a new hand. That makes sense, actually. I would take a new hand. Ah, uh, Grey Wing is going to go in. Morphin Jar gets hit. They're both going to lose a lot of cards. Oh, you lost Monster Abort. Ooh, card destruction. Ooh. You be careful there. You got two Black Pendants in your hand. You could use those. Oh, he got his boss. It's over. The Dark Ruler, Hades, and it's double buff. The boss monster is here, the strongest card in his deck, and just deserts for good measure. A thousand burn goes through. What is going on here? If you want to see Mokuba's lost cards, they lost Monster Reborn, Poly Poly, and that's it. That's all you need to worry about. Don't worry about the rest. They're all good. And we already know this man. Yep. Yeah, it's looking real good to be a Bakora fan right now. 3450 is a hard attack point to mess with. That doesn't even work. Don't you get it? Hades says no. Hades literally says no. All right. This is in the Duelist Kingdom you remember. This is a whole new series. Flying Kamikiri comes back out of desperation. They're both going to see who has the stronger card. I love when they do this, kind of. We get to see who has the stronger monster. Mystic Tomato will go for... Mystic Tomato, fair, fair enough. Flying Kamik. Okay, we're going to keep it going. Everyone call. Who's going to win this 1v1? I'm going to go with... Oh, no. 15. The other guy didn't have any more. It looks like he already used all of his uh, dark monsters. All right. So, technically, Bakura... Uh, I mean, uh, Mokuba won that one, but still. And Headless Knight is here. And we're just going to go in. He has full advantage. Doesn't want to give his opponent a new hand. I understand that. And, yeah, Headless Knight's doing really good. Okay, we have the Crawling Dragon. It's going in for 50 damage. It's uh, desperate, but it's something he had to do. You're not going to survive Hades anyway. That's one of his best cards. He got the Gilgirth, and it's over. Hades oh, don't be a jerk. Why'd you do that? Oh, my God. Game one goes to Yami Bakora. That was brutal. Once he got Hades, it was over. Hades negating everybody's effect is pretty insane. That is pretty insane. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's get into game number two. Everybody place your bets. I know Mokuba really didn't get to show off in that first duel, but maybe, you know, give him some hope and maybe this will work. Alright, let's see here. Okay, we got Mountain. That's really good for Mokuba. They're going to need it. They are desperately going to need it. I can already see the hand that B uh, Bakora has. It's desperate. Black Pendant, okay. 2300 attack goes through. MST says no. Apparently that monster has good defense, but not when Black Pendant's involved. And it did. It had 22. He would have lost if it was uh, if he didn't get rid of that Black Pendant. Chain Energy. Anything can happen in this duel now. Chain Energy has been played. Anything can happen. It's going to be rough. Magical Thorn. That's going to be hilarious. Chain Energy. He plays a card, but that's all he can do. Mokobos Kaiba's boss monster needs two tributes. So, Oh, no. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Up, oh, Grey Wing's dead. Yeah, you're not going to get two tributes that way. Uh, Ginergy, thank you so much for following. I appreciate sure our sub subbing. I really appreciate that. I hope you have some fun in today's tournament. And Chain Energy again. Monster Aborn. He could do it now. Does he have his boss? Let's see. Does Mokuba have the boss monster? He does! Everybody say hello to the Seiyar, you, Ryu, whatever. And here he is. This is the strongest card in Mokuba's deck. Mokuba's boss. All right, so what are you going to do now? You're going to play defensively, ain't you? Oh, no, you're not. Okay, Morphin Jar, we need a new hand. And that new hand has earned you your boss monster, but will it be enough? Pot of Greed comes through, and it doesn't look like you have anything to do with your boss monster. Grace of Charity comes through, and it's still... Oh, I see a good card in your hand, though. I see a good card. You didn't use it, though. Why didn't you use it? Holy crap, you don't have many life points left. You should have used it while you had the chance. You may not be able to play cards next turn. I'm talking about this card right here. It's really good. All right, paying a thousand life points. He plays Fusion Sage. Why would he do that unless he has it? That's a thousand life points, bro. All right, here we go. Another thousand life points. Nope, he has Grey Wing. Another thousand life points. He has MST. Up, oh, just deserts another thousand life points. Okay, Mokuba, you can only play one more card. Mokuba can only afford to play one more card. 
Sayaru goes in, making it so the opponent can only play one card as well. Both characters can only play one card now. After that, they're done. One card can be played. How will you win this? He's playing one card. Interesting. He's not going aggressive. He knows it wouldn't win in the duel, but it would stop. Uh, Sayari is the problem. Uh, that, okay, this is it. The final card he plays. Pot okay, he's an idiot. It's AI. What are you going to do? If you play Mr. Tomato face up, you die. Yep, you die. And that is it, everybody. The winner is Mokuba Kaiba. In a very tense duel, his boss monster gave him the advantage and the AI being stupid. We'll take it. <laughs> Holy crap. We're going into game number three, baby. Can Mokuba actually knock out top tier competitors for his brother? That'd be great. That would be great. All right. Oh, we got two of his mini boss monster, but they're not that great. They're just decent. I mean, that, that's better than some people's cards in this game. Heavy Storm is beautiful. You got rid of the chain energy. You're going to need that. Fusion Sage, okay. That might help out if he goes for it. We never know if he actually has the fusion, though. Black Pendant, that's going to help out a lot because you don't want your opponent to get to their mini boss. Good job. It's almost like you could see their hand, Mokuba. All right, maybe a little cheater, a little trickster. Oh, no. Yami Bakora is bricked. Is he going to lose to Mokuba? Is Yami Bakora going to lose to Mokuba? That would be hilarious. I would get a great laugh out of that. All right, let's see what happens. He needs a Mystic Tomato, something to help stall. Oh, he drew two in a row. What are the odds? Holy crap, I can't believe it. He actually drew two in a row. It's over. It's got to be over. That is great. That is great. One turn away from death. I love it. He has to top deck something that we don't... I mean, I mean any boss, any monster would have been fine. If he got any monster, he would have been fine because he had two black pendants. But it does not matter because he's dead. He's dead, Jim. All right. Mokuba is going ham. And he tributes for game. That's game. 500 burn. Trap hole don't matter. You take the 500. Tribute for game. Get wrecked. Yep, Mokuba saves the world, and he doesn't even know it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so there we go, everybody. We have ended this duel. All right, let's get back to our bracket, and let's see who's up next. The next competitor will be... Johnny Steps versus Joey Wheeler. Johnny Steps was invited to this tournament. Joey Wheeler is a stowaway. He was not supposed to be here. So let's see how these two competitors do against each other. Who do you guys think will win? Johnny Steps or Joey Wheeler? I'm kind of excited for this duel just because Joey's involved, but Johnny Steps is not a bad duel, so we'll see. At least not in this series. In this series, he has some pretty good cards. I mean, not many cards can buff your monster by 1,500 for crying out loud. Yep, normal Yugi's in the tournament. Um, where's Johnny? Johnny boy. Oh, I found Johnny. Give me a second. Yep. He was trying to hide from me. I don't know why. Well, I'm not going to hurt him. I just need you to get ready for your duel. All right. That was a really fun duel. It was funny to see Mokuba win that one. But let's get into the next duel of Johnny Steps versus Joey Wheeler. All right, let's see how it goes. Joey Wheeler's opening hand is pretty decent. He got one of his beater monsters. I like that. I like that he got a beater monster. And Sojin to buff it. He's one of the few people that run Meadow, basically. 1900 attack is pretty effective. Let's see what his opponent answers with. Pot of Greed is a very good answer. Ukazi. Oh, he set fire to the Sojin. I love it. Polly already! Leave him alone! Johnny, no! That's my boy! He can't trap hole a mystical sand! That's not fair! It's not fair! Leave him alone! Oh, crap. You could trap hole that, at least. Well, that's no good. He's already lost a really good monster that normally would have been a really good beater in this tournament. But yeah, Johnny can just fuse on turn one. Not bad from Johnny Boy. You got two of them now, but what's the point? Exactly. He agrees. 
What is the point? All right, Joey will figure something out, I'm sure, which is Black Forest. I'm totally not biased, by the way. 100% no host biased right here. Don't worry, I'm a, I'm a fair, fair host. All right, let's see what you got. Ooh, you're wasting your monster, born. Yeah, Lava Battle Guard sadly doesn't fuse, so you can't use the King of the Swamp. That would have been a crazy play, though. You didn't even summon Lava Battle Guard. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Oh, no. Things are getting bad. Oh, no. Oh, you didn't even have to use Polly. The game would not have made you use Polly there. Okay, whatever. You had fun. And he gets his boss monster, the Musician King. And just end this freaking duel. I'm getting sad now. You're starting to make me sad. All right, there we go. Joey Wheeler is getting wrecked. He definitely did not get a chance to improve his deck on the way to Duelist Kingdom because he didn't know he was coming. Uh, oh, 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 wow. Starting to look like Bakora's third hand. All right, just go ahead and go go get him. Go, go get him. I don't, I don't need to see this. I don't need to see this. This is heartbreaking. Mystical Sam will win game number one. Joey Wheeler gets wrecked. There's a reason Johnny was invited and Joey was not. I think in 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 Joey's history in this lore, he has only won one duel. Joey has only won one duel in his history in our lore of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era. And it was against, like, uh, what was her name? Callie. It was against Callie. Alright, that's a little bit more effective hand if you're not going to have advantage, I guess. Which, honestly, you may not because he might fuse immediately again, which is just unlucky. Oh, MST. That's brutal. MST on MST. Ukaz, he got to do that 800 burn. And Ancient Elf will definitely defeat your monster. And Masaki is adorable, but I don't think he's going to do much. That is incorrect. Your boss monster does not, infl uh, does not have to be your strongest. It is his. All right, Copycat is nice at least, but he's not willing to crash, which honestly makes sense because on, he's probably got way stronger cards than that card. Okay, oh, it's over. It's over. He would not use that effect unless he had a fusion. He's going to fuse on my boy right now. Who's going to be the fusion? Oh, no. Oh, it's the boss monster. Lady of Faith, Witch of Black. It's the actual two monsters you need. No King of the Swamp involved. And we got Musician King. And we got Fusion Weapon, one of the strongest equip spells. It is the strongest equip spell. Oh, uh, no. It's one of the strongest. There's one equip spell in this tournament that's stronger. All right. Well, Joey, you have one option left, and you've never really succeeded before. But today is the day. Today is the day. I'm peeking. Ah, come on! Come on! Let him have it! Let him have it! Has he ever succeeded a Time Wizard when he needed it? Oh my god. Oh my god, Joey. You have you you better hope this doesn't work. Alright, we'll try it. We'll try, Joey. We'll, we'll figure something out together. I like this, Joey. I like this a lot. We're gonna Time Wizard. You're gonna win. You're gonna get it right this time. You pick Tails, right? Yes, he picked Tails! All right, Joey, now go in and start punching hard. Punch them so hard. Okay, Johnny, don't you dare get a monster. I will I will snap up here. My brain can't handle much more. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, yeah, do it! King of the Swamp! King of the Swamp! Let's go all in, baby! All in! I want to see the biggest dragon you got. No! No! Don't just attack! Just use the fusion! Not on main phase two, you dumb idiot! Oh, god damn it! Oh, no. That is no good. All right. Well, this is Joey's strongest monster. And in this tournament, that is 24 is actually really strong. It's still pretty good. Pretty good. That's stronger than Damian Draco right there. All right. I don't like this. You can set that, though. That can make you feel son of a bitch. That can make you feel safe. Just don't attack with your weak monsters. Good. Attack with the strong monsters. I like that. He was scouting for a trap. I don't think that's scouting when you still do the play on main phase, too. <laughs> if you're still going to do it on main phase two, I think you're just an idiot. Oh, man. At least he's still in the duel, though. Joey is not out of the tournament just yet. Yeah, get that Sojin on the field. Buff your monsters. Okay, you're not going to. Doesn't matter. You got rid of Giant Soldier of Stone. He's too scared to go with 1,100 attack points because he knows just a simple monster could beat him. But he has back row, but he doesn't know if the opponent will heavy storm like he did in the first duel. Okay, understandable. I'm freaking out for no reason. Let's see if Joey can do this. Joey, yeah, that could be good. You get Flame Manipulator, it'll be worthwhile. 1800 attack is pretty safe, especially in a tournament like this. Okay, can we top deck flame manipulator? That is the question. 
Can Joey top deck it and get his two strongest card? His boss thousand, his mini boss uh, flame swordsman. Mm. Not like that, he can't. King of the Swamp is gone. Good, good thousand dragon. Just keep thinning him out. I'll take it. He already used Ukazi. I'm sorry, Lobo Link. He already did it. It was his opening play. It's way over here in the grave. Yep, right there. Ukazi. Ooh, I like that trap. That trap is good. Light Hex Seal. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. It's all good. Oh, my God. Finally. Okay, Joey. He doesn't have any monsters. Go all in. All in, babe. No! Johnny Steps was invited for a reason. Get Joey out of here. <laughs> get, get, get him out of here. I don't need to see him anymore. Yeah, this was too big of a tournament for him. He's, he's too small. He needs time to improve his deck. All right. There we go. That was fun, though. That was fun. So let's go ahead and see our next competitors in the tournament. The next competitors will be Mimic of Doom and Rex Raptor. Mimic of Doom is one of the mercenaries that Pegasus hired to knock people out of his tournament. And Rex Raptor is the intercontinental finalist that is going to try and win with his dinosaur deck. So let's see what, what uh, happens between these two characters. Mimic of Doom or uh, Rex Raptor. Which one do you guys like more? So far, none of the mercenaries have gotten knocked out. Every mercenary has won so far. So they were worth paying for, uh, Pegasus. It turns out they're pretty darn good at dueling. I don't know if uh, that matters, though, when we get to these opponents. Let's just go ahead and let's see who's up. Mimic of Doom, Rex Raptor. And it looks like I'm ready to start the, tur or the fight, so hopefully you guys already placed your bets. Let's get it going. Don't worry, I'm going to let you guys see right now. And there we are, Rex Raptor versus the Mimic of Doom. Don't worry about Mimic's deck, it's gonna be wild. Ooh, that's a cool hand for Rex Raptor, I like that hand. Freeze Body Heat, okay, we're at 19, a 19 beater is really good, it's gonna be hard for the Mimic to deal with that. Mimic of Doom is gonna play Fisher, yeah, that would do it. That would do it. And Mr. Tomato, yep. Yep, 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 unlucky. You still got Urby though, Urby's enough. You don't need to use your premature. You could save that for later. Ooh, you got your ace monster. Okay, we got two out of King Rex, and we got ourselves the fun card, Crawling Dragon number two. Two better beater monsters. Uh, okay. Oh, shit. We lost the ace monster. Two of his better beater monsters. These dinosaurs are actually pretty good at hitting you. You know, 60 under attack is pretty decent in a tournament like this. The only problem is, uh, yeah, you're giving this tie. Oh, oh, enemy controller. Yep, that would do it. The Mimic of Doom is controlling your fate, and that is no good. Funny enough, a basic Urby dinosaur is still better than everything you got, though. Okay, Potagree could help. You definitely need something else, because you already used Premature. Okay, Monsterborn is not... Okay, yeah, you're going to use it. You can't help yourself. I get it, I get it. You're you're addicted. You are addicted. Don't play Black Pendant, though. Okay, well, you see that card over there? His name is Cruel, or Kyrule, I don't know. Um, that's a card you don't want to deal with. You know you haven't normal summoned yet. You could have played Urubi. Just saying. Not trying to be a jerk. You could just play it. Dad Tribe, thank you for being a sub, uh, a tier 3 sub for 17 months. You are amazing. And I hope you guys like the boss monster, Doom Shaman. Oh boy. Doom Shaman is here. This is going to be the mimic of Doom's boss monster. And it is a very good boss monster for his deck. And now that Black Pendant was wasted, as I thought. Rex Raptor's in a lot of trouble, and the Doom Shaman is ready to go. If they summon it again, it's over. All right, let's see. We're just going to set. We're, 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 we're in tears right now. Cruel's going to destroy Urubi. If they get a third monster, things are going to get worse. Yep. Doom Shaman's effect. We're going to special summon Sangan. Yep, that happens. Sangan's going to go after the monster. I would use Doom Shaman next. Okay, you're too stupid to... Oh, no, you're not. It's fine. Reinforcements goes in. Giant Rat didn't stand a chance. Please pick another rat, for the love of God. Thank God. And things are not looking good. That Doom Shaman's going to start special summoning a bunch of monsters. Serpent Night Dragon needs two tributes, and he does not have it. And it would be defensive enough, so sadly, he'd really need... Oh, no, Rexy boy! What's going on? You're having some trouble here in the old Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, man. Oh, man. Doom Shaman's just going to bring it right back. It looks like the Mimic of Doom has this duel. How do you even come back if you're Rex Raptor? I don't think you do. 
Reason, don't do that to him. Leave the boy alone. At least tell me you picked level 4, because almost everything is level 4. You know, you're hitting a lot of good spells and traps, at least. That's level 4. You didn't say level 4. The Manian Treasure Chest is here. This is one of his best cards. I'm not joking. Yep, double Manian Treasure Chest for the Mimic of Doom. Alright, this is working real good. Panic. Okay, Panic. Paradox Brothers and the Mimic of Doom are doing good work. That was only game one, though. Rex Raptor could still come back as the Intercontinental finalist, but he wasn't the champ. So there's a reason he's losing. Come on, man. You could do this. Don't lose this freaking Mimic of Doom. Don't be like Mai when she lost to Panic. Come on. In the show, not my show. In, in the actual show. Okay, this hand is a little bit better. Oh, please say level four. Yay, he said level four. Thank God. Oh, it didn't matter. Monster Reborn. All right, good. Yep, that, that happens. I was just hoping for him to say level four, though. That makes me feel a lot better. All right, we got Urby. We got Black Pendant. Is it just me or is the music, like, really intense? Why is the music so intense? Why is this music so intense? What the hell? Yeah, I have a, I have headphones. I don't like wearing them, though. I, I headphones make my head feel uncomfortable. All right. Oh, we got his Element Doom card. That's really good. Element Doom can negate uh, monster effects when they destroy him by battle. All right. Well, we're going to get Giant Rat out here. Giant Rat is... If it dies to Element Doom, that's really bad. Sangan's going to let him get his Mystic Tomato. That makes sense. And Dark Mimic Level 3 is going to let him draw a card. Yep. All right. He's got Doom cards and he's got Mimic cards, and look at that. Oh, he got his boss, Doom Shaman. It's over. If you... Wait, he can get Serpent Night Dragon, but he only has enough defense. It's not enough attack points. It's still an interesting idea, though. I like the idea to just set to protect yourself. Yeah, that works. At least we know Doom Shaman can't beat you. That's the good news. That is the good news. Rex Raptor has done this. All right, Doom Shaman's going to start special summoning like crazy. Sangan's a great target. I respect that. You take a lot of deflected damage for that one. And Serpent Night Dragon showing off why a good defense can help you at times. Now he can wait for an equip spell, although both are waiting for an equip spell. No. No, don't put it in attack. You baited him. Really? That counts as bait? It wasn't even that delicious bait. You gave him a card for that bait. Come on, bro. What are you doing? This Serpent Night Dragon needs to stay alive or you're going to die. Doom Shaman can just bring you back infinitely. El Element Doom is here now. Don't you get it? <laughs> All right, Sangan goes in. At least that didn't. At least that didn't go badly. All right. Well, we'll figure something out. What are we gonna do here? Ooh, oh, but you have no more tributes. Oh, call the haunted. Okay, but that has to be an attack. Mo oh, what the hell is going on here? We're just trying to clear the field. You do know Doom Shaman can just keep resummoning, and you're just giving him more cards. Is there a play here that I don't understand? Because I, like, I'm like i confused just watching this duel. If he gets back Element Doom, he can negate Giant Rat, and that's the scary part. Doom Shaman. Nope, he loves it. I don't blame him for love. Oh, no, he had one in his hand. That's why. And negating the Giant Rat is the good play. And Doom Shaman goes in, and it looks like Rex Raptor. I, I don't know any other play you have. You have a Soul Exchange, but unless you draw a Dinosaur, you're done. Well, not that one. Don't, don't you dare special summon it. I was going to say, don't, don't do that. Doom Shaman again. Leave him alone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Leave him alone. Oh, the Mimic has done it. Mimic of Doom is doing exactly what he was paid to do. He is knocking out Rex Raptor in a really brutal duel. It's over. Game winning attack. It is over. Rex Raptor, go home. You are not a finalist. Uh, you are a finalist, but you are not a champion. Get him out of here. Every one of the freaking uh, dueling mercenaries did their job. Every single one of them. They all knocked out a competitor, at least one competitor so far. So Mimic of Doom can move forward. The next duel and the final duel of round one of the tournament, which round one specifically had weaker characters. Everyone with uh, in round two either is a champion or had a higher seed for one of those reasons. So let's see. Bakora Rio. This is the OG Bakora. Now he's just in the tournament to win. He doesn't know that Yami Bakora has already been stopped. Yeah, where's Bakora at? There we go. 
And Mako Tsunami. Mako Tsunami was not invited to this tournament. I forgot he also wasn't invited. Mako Tsunami was not invited to this tournament. In this one, he is actually just a fisherman that was near the island and then saw everyone on the island dueling and was like, I'm going to duel. And now he is here. So let's do it, guys. Let's start this duel. All right, let's give a chorus face on there. Oh, I still have the mimic face, don't I? Whoopsie doodle. All right. There we go. Mako versus Bakora. This should be a good duel, though. Alright, we got some sets. And let's see what Mako's got. Mako, what do you got in your uh, deck right here? Great White. Great White's pretty good. Great White is pretty good. But Man Ear Bug wanted you to summon something good. So it could do this to you. And now he's set up for White Magical Hat. I do like that play. Good play from uh, Bakora. I like this. Very good. White Magical Hack can toss a card now to make sure the opponent doesn't get any good stuff. He lost Fiend Kraken, which would have been strong enough. That's a big loss for him. Alright. Well, of the... Du oh! Dark Hole for a White Magical Hat? Who here has Dark Hold for sing a singular White Magical Hat? Not me. I hope I didn't. Oh my god, there's so many videos I may have. Let's just assume I didn't. All right, Giant Germ comes through. It looks like Mako Tsunami. He's more of a fisherman than a duelist. We'll see how he does, though. Oh, no, he's bricked. Oh, yes, he is. That that Fiend Kraken was very important. Pot of Greed, though. Top deck of the gods right there. And Jellyfish is good enough. Graceful Charity. Let's see what he gets. Uh, Jellyfish is good enough. But you are giving your opponent tributes if they happen to draw their boss monster. I don't believe Joey's in this uh, fight. <laughs> Check Mako's Grave as you wish. Uh, it's just Salvage and, pot of, uh, and MST. Magda Jammer will not allow the change of heart as it is a busted card. Good, That was a very good use of Magic Jammer. Lots of... Oh, that Morphing Jar is going to be huge for both players. Because obviously Mako needs more monsters. Oh, we do, he did draw another Jellyfish though. I'll give him that. He's taking a lot of burn, but he's getting rid of all the tributes. So that's good. All right, let's see here. Two jellyfish working side by side. Magical Thorn is very good to set, and it was a un it was unable to activate in time. Well, when you have three morphin jars, you can do whatever the hell you want, huh? You're just some big old man, eh? And one of his boss monsters are here. There's the mini boss monster. A thousand burn goes through, and a thousand burn goes through, and it looks like game to me. Oh, rush recklessly! He saves it. Mako Tsunami was about to lose to the burn effect, but instead he saves the duel. Holy crap, he was about to take 2,000 burn, 500 battle damage. It was exact. It was exact, but he's still alive. But White Magical Hat can't hold the field by itself. Mo oh, he got his boss. Everybody, Mako Tsunami's boss monster. The only person in this tournament with a normal rarity card. Kairushin. All right, 200 goes through as a boss monster, that is. 1,200 goes through. 1,600 goes through. 2,200 to your face. You're going down. He's playing for keeps today. All right, you draw a card. It's too late for that boss monster now. It's way too late. Oh, you're right. If he could survive one more turn, he could have got Just Desserts with this, and Just Desserts would win him the duel. Damn, he would have been able to win. Just Desserts is right there. But it does not matter. Go all in. Kaiushin, go ham. Mako takes game number one. The Fisherman has done it. Just random fishermen. You know what? I love animes or stuff that just have a random fisherman in it. I, I watched, uh, what was that one? Freaking, uh, god damn it. It's uh, one of them fighting anime. King and, Ash King and Ashura? Something like that. And there's like a fisherman in that too. He was he was really cool. <laughs> I, I like that fighting anime. That one, that one was hype. All right. So let's see what we got here. We got Pato Greed. We got a Mother Grizzly. Mother Grizzly's good and it's buff now. All right, let's see what we got from you, though. Two Mystic Tomatoes, very bad hand. Graceful Charity, let's see if you get three. Nope. Potto Greed is a good card. Let's see if you can get a better card. You know what? Double Just Desserts is not bad, I'm not going to lie. And Great White is here. Great White takes out the Mystic Tomato, makes sense. Mystic Tomato can stall with Mystic Tomato, makes sense. All right. And we got Giant Germ. Giant Germ's not a bad choice. Giant Germ can definitely give you some uh, options later on. I might uh, set up a Morphing Jar if I were you. Just saying, as your friend. Don't worry, I'm your buddy. 
I'm trying to help. Just Desserts does a thousand burn. Nothing wrong with a thousand. A thousand's a good chunk. Alright, and we got ourselves that thing. So, let's see what we got here. Umi! Okay, with Umi, he's gonna be stronger. He got his boss, Kaiyushin! And because of the Umi buff, he's strong enough! And he will be taking down his opponent. But Korra's in some trouble. Don't pick Giant Germ, please pick something else. I'm sure you have other things to pick. Ah, you dumb idiot. Okay. Well, we're gonna use Giant Germ and use the Germ to get the Germ. I guess if you draw your Tribute Monster, it will be good, but you have not drawn your Tribute Monster just yet. Oh, okay. You could. Yeah, I was going to say, you could. Yeah. A thousand burn, then go all in to make it so you they lose by Giant Germ if they try to win? I, I could see that. Yeah. No, I could see. Oh, you didn't go all in with the Germs. You should have went all in, bro. You should have went all in. He still has his boss monster. What do you throw away, though? You hit Great White. Good hit. Good hit. Damn it. He needed to go all in with his germs, but he's a coward and a fool. All right. Kairoshin goes in against White Magical Hat. The germs will remain. He still has a chance of getting his boss monster, though, so he has tributes for that. Eh. Yeah. Morphing Jar can give him what he needs to win this duel, but it also could work the other way and give Mako what he needs. Mako just has his boss. He's going for the burn. I would say, like, the odds of you drawing your boss monster, Bakora, is really high, so just go for the flip. Like, it's really high to... Oh, well, there's your mini boss. That might be good enough, actually. Oh, no, you don't want it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, get your dark... Yep, there they are. There's your boss. And with your boss, now just play spell cards. Black Pendant is a spell card. Now play more spell cards. Oh, you don't need to. You have a shit ton of attack points. And there we go. And there we go. And Chain Energy. He can't play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. It's over. It's over. It's over. Mako has to win with his two trap cards. Whatever those two trap cards are, they're the only cards that can win him the duel. It's over. Bakor is going to take game number two unless he makes a misplay. Is there a misplay to be made? He attacks with his boss. He wins with his boss. Hell yeah. Bakor takes game number two against the Fisherman. An interesting deck for sure. Alright, let's get into game number three. A lot of game threes today, and it's only round one. So, what's going to happen in game number three? Will it be Bakora who takes it, or will it be our buddy Mako? Okay, this is a very interesting opening hand. Great White is here. Great White's going to get them to lose all their cards. That's a... Uh... Yeah, that's a thing that happened. Oh, holy crap. Holy crap. What is this hand? All right. Um, you got Germ. Maybe that's better to... Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Why are you doing this? No. no. This is definitely not the best play you could have made, given your hand, but I'll take it. I'll take it because I have to. You, you use Call the Haunted on Morphing Jar. Do you not regret that? I would regret that immediately. Alright, let's see if you could do this, Mako. You're going to need to make a comeback right here. 500, you got Violent Rain. It's not strong enough, but you at least can destroy that card, but that gives your opponent room to play a spell or trap. Oof. Oof. This is a rough one. The Equip Spell is Black Pendant. Alright, Giant Germ goes through. Oh, he was holding back Rush recklessly. There you go. All right, Mystic Tomato can at least get a card. Black Pendant will do a thousand burn, which is uh. Oh, you mean that one? That's Buster Rancher. Don't worry about that one. That one does not matter against Mako Tsunami, I don't think. It matters against higher tier opponents. Mako Tsunami is kind of a lower tier opponent. He was not invited. Yeah. Chain Energy comes through. We got ourselves a Tacky Minos, and yep, yeah, Mystic Tomato is going to die. Mystic Tomato gets Mystic Tomato. Mystic Tomato is going to die. Mystic Tomato gets... Giant Germ. Sure, that's for burn, I guess. The question is, are you going to go all in? Oh, I would do it. Yeah. All in. Double change. Double change of heart. Don't be afraid. I don't know if the AI is programmed to use both, but do it anyway. Do it for me. Do it for old Cooper. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's game. 
That is game, everyone. The Fisherman Mako Tsunami was actually pretty decent. He won duel number one, but he is not going to win it. It looks like Bakora is better than his evil half. Just like that, Bakora takes game three. All right, we've had fun with the easier duelists. I know not all of them were easier. Some of them were pretty insane, but it's time to get into the higher tier part of our tournament. Everybody, let us go to round two. Round two, why is Rex on your screen? What the hell? Rex, get out of here. You're not in the tournament. <laughs> Rex, you're not in the tournament. Uh, round number two is going to be the hard round because this is where all the big characters were lying. So let's go ahead. Let me move this character forward real quick. Good job, Bakora. The next fight is Yugi Muto versus Panic. Yugi is the champion of Domino High Tournament. Panic is hired mercenary. Pl place your bets on who you think is going to win. If you miss the intro on um, Yugi Muto, you are going to be very surprised today. Only if you missed his bio today. That was definitely a bio you did not want to miss. And Panic, where the heck are you? All right, Panic, come on. People want to watch you duel. They want to watch you play the Yu-Gi-Oh. Hmm, he's hiding. Okay, old Cooper's having a lot more trouble than I thought. It shouldn't be this hard to find him. I had, I we used him earlier. Yep, there he is. All right. <clears throat> All right, here we go, everybody. It is time. Let us get into the next fight of the tournament. It will be Yugi Muto versus Panic. Let's go. I'm looking for their faces. Don't worry. Uh, yep. Panic is ready. Yugi is ready. All right, let's watch these two competitors duel and see what happens. Pot of Greed, that's very good. Pot of Greed's a great start. Let's see what he gets. Pot of Greed gives him, ooh, he got his ninja card. And with his ninja card, he can't destroy that card just yet, but he can destroy that card. All right, eventually. So, Yugi, let's see what happens. And we got ourselves good old drop off, and that hit his yellow luster shield. And that's very good. So now, Sasuke, you can destroy that face-up monster. Oh, we got his Gemini Elf. That's really good. Oh, my God. And Sasuke's effect will activate because now it's a face-up monster. Rui Kishin will get destroyed this time. And it looks like Yugi holds field advantage. Yugi Mudo. All right. Monster Aborn could be used if he really wants. I would not. Okay. Well, Yugi disagrees. I, I don't know if it was worth it for the castle. Are you trying to make fun of him? Are you trying to throw his own castle against him and you think that's funny? That's messed up, Yugs. <laughs> Come on, man. Leave him alone. Is it? Is this because he knocked out Tristan? Are you mad he knocked out one of your buddies who was not even supposed to be here? All right. And end phase. Okay, unlucky there. Looks like Panic is already dead in game number one. All right. Yeah. It. Yeah. Holy crap. Oh, my God. Well, Yugi takes game number one. I thought his deck would be a little brickier since he has so much ritual stuff in his deck now, but turns out he didn't care. <laughs> he did not care. Drew all the best stuff he had. And yeah, good job. And it looks like we're going to go into game number two extremely quickly. The duels might go faster now simply because we have the better duelists that got the higher seeds because they were the champions in, you know, round two. Um, not a bad hand. Not a bad hand. Mm, that's right, Panic. That's right. Play defensively. And Yugi was just extremely lucky to get two of these. Oh, but he's not using it this time, which is fine. Yeah, it wouldn't matter if he did. So, yeah, he's still going to be able to kill that because he does run Sasuke. Yeah. Yeah. Sasuke does... Oh, he got it! He got his boss, King of Yami Makai. And he's got this card for funsies, I guess. I don't know why they keep bringing him back for, like, no reason. It's fine. Let him play his game. And there goes your card, Yugi. Now you're the one in trouble. How are you going to defeat the King of Yami Makai? Yeah, you could steal it, but you can't defeat it. So, haha. -ha. All right. Well, two ritual cards. That's no good. Like I said, this is how he gets bricked up. This is what's supposed to happen. Yugi is... Oh, is he going to set... Is he actually going to set? That'd be a really good play. No, he's an idiot. Why didn't you go all in then? If you were going to play that face-up attack mode, why didn't you go do 1,800 damage, Yugi? 
Oh, he's got his fusion? What the hell? We're gonna see it! Everybody say hello to the almighty Barox! <laughs> okay, Barox is here. Yep, that fusion has 1380 attack and 1530 defense. You are not gonna see that coming, I promise you. It's too late for Morphing Jar now. Yugi wasted his goddamn time. Well, that's a hell of a top deck, though. Pot agreed. Let's see what he gets. It's all up to luck. If the opponent is dumb enough to play a monster, it's all up to luck. No! He played a monster! The whole duel is in the air now. Will Yugi top deck a card? Yes, he will! Yugi gets Don Zalug! Axe of Despair comes through! Don Zalug goes in! Yugi's gonna make him discard from the top of the deck! He lost Reaper of the Cards and Yami! Alright. Alright. Don Zalug is really strong right now. Panic's in a panic right now. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's freaking out. Gemini Elf is here. Gemini Elf goes in. Nope, you lose by 30, Yugi. You lose by 30. Don Zalug goes in, he will destroy. Yugi has Protag powers. I have no idea how it keeps happening, but it's real. Protag powers are real. And it's over. It's over. Yugi's going to go to round three. Yugi is going to top eight in our tournament of Duelist Kingdom. Attack goes through. 2,400 damage. And you lose the only card in your hand, which was Dark Chimera. And there goes 14. And there goes your life. Gemini Elf has done it. Yugi Mudo has won. Nope. Mako Tsunami had three copies of TT, and we didn't even see him use one of them. And I believe, uh, so you know who else has TT? Diesel Kane. Diesel Kane also has TT. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to our bracket, and let's see who's up next. Yugi Mudo has uh, taken the first victory of this. The next duel is Weevil Underwood, the Intercontinental Champion versus Taya Gardner, the runner-up of Carnival Champions Carnival Tournament. So who do you guys like more? Are you a Weevil fan or a Taya fan? Alright, Weevil fan or a Taya fan? Let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to set up uh, the fights. I just need their faces, and we're ready to start. Let's do this. Where's Weevil and Taya? There we go. All right. Pretty good start for Weevil, honestly. He got his forest early. He's not going to use it because he doesn't know if his opponent plays plant cards. Fair enough, but I would use it either way, but still. Uh, she's got Maiden. Oh, it's already two. Oh, you needed your four. Oh, no, it didn't matter anyway. Never mind. It didn't matter. You know, a high defense deck might not work too well against a girl who plays a billion equip spells and some average monsters. Oh, no. How will he ever get the Petite Moth combo? Okay, Thunder Nyan Yen. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good. Thunder Nyan Yen and 2600. Yep, you gotta love it. Gotta love it. Let's see who else we got. Yeah, that's going to happen. If you're running this deck, Weevil, it's going to happen where you draw those cards. Poto Greed. Poto Greed comes through. And Thunder Nian. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not looking, uh, not looking too good for old Weevil Underwood. Not in this first duel. He could still monster aboard if he really wants to. He just hasn't decided yet. All right. That is your best card. You have two equip spells just like Taya. Oh. You had two equip spells and Forest! You literally... Oh, actually... No, no, you could have won, right? That's that's 7... 1,000... 1,300 extra attack. You would have had 2,800 attack. And his dumbass AI didn't know what to do. Get rid of him. All right, game one goes to Taya with just two equip spells. That's all she needed. He had enough attack points there. He plays Forest. He plays his two equip spells on the monster. He had it. All right, going into game number two. Let's see if Taya will easily brutalize the Intercontinental Champion or if uh, he'll actually pull off some combos like he's supposed to. This hand's a little bit, you know, pretty good. He's got some decent cards there. Granted, she's already got her equip spell showing. 
She got two of her best equip spells already. Oh my god. Oh my god, Taya. Holy crap. Now maybe he'll draw Fisher. Everyone's got like a Fisher in there. No, that ain't Fisher. <laughs> that, that card ain't Fisher. I'll tell you that. That's no good. All right, we'll see what he gets. He still hasn't gotten any of his back row, really. He does run back row. Like, this card I don't really count. It's just Monster Reborn. I don't know why you would set that, you crazy person. Cocoon of Evolution. Yeah, I wish you could play the whole combo. Yeah, that is no good. That is no good. 3,200. Holy crap, Taya. Go a little easy on the guy. Give him a break. Oh, that card could help. That card could desperately help. But it may not matter anymore. You could take the 32, so don't do it. Okay. Now you could do it. You're not smart enough to do it. Okay, fair enough. Oh, well, maybe. Monster Reborn, okay. Petite Moth's face up defense mode, like a smart person would. Cocoon combo? Nope, he didn't use Cocoon. I was afraid of this. I was like, is he going to use Cocoon of Evolution and make an attempt at it? No, he's not. He's not, because he's an idiot. Well, I at least tried to give the AI a chance to do it. All he could do now is get Hercules Beetle. 600 deflected. She almost had a perfect victory. Holy crap. Will he get any of his good spells and traps to destroy? Forest? It won't matter if he plays Forest. He doesn't even want to. He gives up. He's given up. He's not even tribute setting. Thunder and Yan Yan. Oh my god. It's getting worse by the second. Her hand is so good. She did, ha she did know she was coming. She was invited. She got to buff up her deck. And now the hell is he going to do? Kamakiri man, that's what you're gonna do, you you fool! Just get out of here. Get him out of here. He is not he is not up to snuff for this tournament. Get him out. This wasn't a duel; it was a slaughter. I agree. Taya Gardner destroys her opponent, Weevil Underwood. She had more trouble with the first opponent. This guy was nothing to her. Oh my God, Taya Gardner is a monster. She literally had no trouble taking freaking Weevil out. Granted, Weevil didn't play so well, but that's because AI. But what are you going to do? So let's take a look at our bracket together, guys. Let's take a real look at it. So Taya, Bones was harder than Weevil, in my opinion. Because Bones took a W. So Taya's going to top eight. The next duel is Seto Kaiba. Oh, yeah. I really want to watch Seto Kaiba duel. Totally don't want to watch him go 0-2 in my tournaments. That, that would be too funny. All right, Seto Kaiba will be going up against the Paradox Brothers, one of the people hired to take him out, actually. He was the one that uh, Pegasus is the most worried about, so if the Paradox Brothers could take him out, that'd be great. All right. Looks like I am about ready to start this duel, so I hope you guys are ready to watch it. Let's freaking go. Place your freaking bets. I want to see some duels. Who is fighting again? We got Paradox Bros and uh, Seto Kaiba. Paradox and we're Seto. Seto Kaiba. There we go. All right. That's a pretty good destruction hand for uh, Paradox Brothers. They have Fisher and Tribute to the Doom. I'd say that's a win right there. All right. Kaiser Seahorse, Tribute to the Doom. Smart enough to throw away that card so you can monster a born. Amazing play. God tier play. Holy crap. That was so good from the Paradox Brothers. Oh my god. That is so good. Up, oh, Shadow Spell will stall at least. Shadow Spell will stall at least. Okay, well, he holds him back a little bit. He holds him back the smallest amount. But you can't beat Kaizy Jin. That card's still too good. And he knows it. He knows it. He has no hand. This man has no hand. All right, we got the Whirlwind. Negate Attack says no. He needs it for Tribute. Understandable. Understandable. Let's see if he can use it for Tribute with a lucky top deck. Nope, Mystic Horseman is not a lucky top deck. All right, the Shadow Spell did come in handy, knocking out that 17 beater. Mystic Horseman is here to play, though. Ho, ho, ho. We're two cards away from that happening. The card that can even take down Blue Eyes. All right, Whirlwind guy is there. Let's see what you got. Ugh, not looking good. Not looking good. 
Oh, don't you dare. Oh, he got rid of it because he knew. He knew. The king of the swamp is now the king of the dead. And Ancient Lab, you must destroy your other monster now. Okay, the good news is he did that, but it would have been better if the other monster attacked it. So unlucky for Kaiba, but still at least something went his way. Very, very bad duel, though, for Seto Kaiba. He's in so much trouble. All right, we got Tribute Doll. No reason to play because there's nothing to play it with. Ancient Lamp is dead. The Lamp has done some work at least, but unless Kaiba draws his own Fisher, you know, this card right here, if he could draw that card, he's he can come back. He's got three back row. No monsters, no blue eyes, no draw power, no nothing. All right, 25 to the face. Oh, you're taking it. Oh, yeah, you are taking it. MST, good play, because that would have brought back Kaizy Jim, which would have been guaranteed game at that point. Seto Kaiba draws. What is he going to get? He's de You know what he's getting? He's getting desperate. He's getting real desperate. His opponent, on the other hand, is chilling. He got none of his brick cards this time. He just finally drew one. Paradox Brothers drew all their best cards this time. Battle Ox didn't stand a chance against a 25 beater that you can't even beat with Blue Eyes. And speaking of Blue Eyes, I wonder what he just drew. More Tribute Dolls? That's fine. That's for later. 25 to the face. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is going to be good. Hey, thank you, Mr. Gannons, for being a sub for 26 months. I appreciate you. Seto Kaiba, you are going down. If this man draws a monster, it's going to get bad. Oh, that's not a real monster. Let's be real. Aquamador is nice, but not nice enough. Suijin's looking real good. Okay. So, Seto, I don't know if you're having trouble drawing Fisher, Tribute to the Doom or something, but you need to draw that card specifically. If you don't, you lose. If you lose, we laugh at you. We're going to laugh, right? We're going to laugh. Battle Ox is a good card, but you can't beat Suijin with it. So what are you thinking, man? You already used all your best trap cards. It's lucky that you're stalling because your opponent hasn't drawn a single good card since then. They're not going to play Labyrinth Wall. They feel like they have no need. Graceful Charity. That's how he comes back. Graceful. We get the Song of the Thunder most likely. Oh, you're not going to let him. Okay. He had Polly in his hand. That's what the brick was. He had Polly. Makes sense. Polly is a big brick. Speaking from experience here, look at this. All right. Well, Legin. Oh, Legin's a good one, but none of these cards matter. He needs his Fisher. He needs his Tribute to the Doom. Well, actually, that won't even work anymore. He needs something. Okay. Nope. He's still drawing monsters. As long as he's still drawing monsters, he's fine. As long as his opponent doesn't get a good monster. Well, oh, Arsenal Summer is a good monster. And here they come. And Arsenal Summer goes in. Boris Raider is destroyed. And now that that has happened, 25 goes in. And Kaiba loses game number one. The Paradox Brothers are one win away from knocking out the number one ranked character. I'm excited now. That was a great hand to start for the Paradox Brothers. But at the same time, like, Kaiba, where, where was your comeback? You, already, you used your shadow spells too early. You should have saved one for the extra monster. We're going into game two now. If Kaiba gets knocked out by this, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day where I never have to worry about this man. That's a good hand. Oh, that is a good hand. He didn't draw any of his bricks. He drew the best cards possible. Holy crap, and Kaiba has no traps. All right, brain control is just for damage. There's nothing to tribute this turn. Yep, just for damage. You didn't use Mystic Tomato. If you play face-up attack, I'm going to be pissed. Okay, he didn't play face-up attack. That's fine, then. All right, brain control just for 800. I would have saved it, but everyone has their own types of plays. Up, trap hole. Yep, that happens. And it looks like Kaizy Jin is already obtained because guess what? Para had the be or Paradox had the best hand possible. That was literally one of the best hands I've ever seen to guarantee you get one of your boss monsters. Tribute Doll is even cheaper than the Monster Born play. I love it. I love it. He can't attack, but who cares? He can do it next turn. Monster Born's a little over-aggressive, in my opinion. There was no need. There was no need. Call the Okay, now you're really... Look, you can't attack with your monster this turn. So all you... Uh, it's fine. It's fine. You wasted your cards that could have brought back Kaizen in an emergency, but it's fine. All right, there we go. Cannon Soldier, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good search. Holy crap. He's trying to end Kaiba's career real early. Kaiba didn't draw any of his back row this time. There is no back row from Kaiba. Interesting. He threw away Pot of Grief for Wall Shadow? What an idiot. All right, well, there goes Battle Ah! Oh, shit! Seto Kaiba's packing! Oh, my God! All right, well, here we go! Oh, Jirai Gumo, though. It doesn't matter. Jirai Gumo. Why would you set it? Why would you set Jirai Gumo? That was a Jirai Gumo, sir. 
Why in the hell would you set that? There's his trap. Oh, there's his Morse Raider. Oh, there's Lord of D. Oh, there's seven tools. And there's Wall Evolution. That's really good. All right. That's a little bit better. So, that turned this whole duel around. He was honestly going to lose. Pretty much guaranteed until this happened. And he got it. It's over. Blue Eyes White Dragon. I don't think any of your monsters other than the Gate Guardian pieces matter at this point. Now you're in a lot of danger. You are in a lot of danger now. Draw a card. Cannon Soldier will not save you. You could do a little burn at best. Once he got Blue Eyes, we knew it was over. Once we, if we see Blue Eyes, it's over. The sight of a Blue Eyes is just like, oh no, that's the end of the duel, man. That's the end of the duel. What are you going to do? What can you possibly do to this man? All right, Giga Tech Wolf does not matter. Yep, it's just to try and stall for one extra turn to maybe get a trap or spell that may help him. But at this point, I don't see it. Aquamador goes in. That was a horrible play from Kaiba, but the AI is the AI. 3,000 attack goes in. Beautiful damage. Next turn is pretty much guaranteed game, even if he is an idiot. Dragumo. It's not good, but yeah, no, it's over. It's over! Seto Kaiba is definitely going to take game number two, unless he makes a weird play. Up, oh, he gets rid of his lamp for Judge Man. Gotta love Judge Man. And let's end this duel. Force Raider into... We are going to get an animation. Blue Eyes, White Lightning! And just like that, we destroy the Paradox Brothers in game two. Granted, it was 100% luck. That was technically pro tag powers, but... Like, it doesn't feel like it because Kaiba doesn't deserve it. But still, he did it. He's going to game three. He's trying to not get knocked out by one of these uh, mercenaries. Panic was destroyed by Yugi. Granted, there was one time where Panic was going to win, but still. Uh, Panic was destroyed by Yugi. Will the Paradox Brothers also get destroyed? Are all the mercenaries going to lose in round two? They only got people out in round one. Legin, okay. What about Pegasus himself? Will he be able to do it? Oh, he's got the combo. Jiraguma is such a good card in this kind of a tournament. It's so good, especially if they guess right. He did not, though. He took 4,000 damage to do 400 damage. Okay. Okay, that is no good. We'll see what happens here, though. Legin in attack. Oh, he was going to bait, wasn't he? He had a trap. Look at this. Yep, he had a trap. I knew it. I could feel it. Jiraguma is still a little risky. I don't know if you need to use it. Whirlwind Prodigy is a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that one. 22, let's see, he's risking it for the biscuit, he flips a coin, the coin says heads, is that the right call? Yes, that time he got it right, 2200 damage, beautiful. Alright, what do you got? You're almost dead, Kaiba, I'm not joking when I say that, you are almost dead. Oh god, Kaiba's playing himself! Kaiba is literally playing himself, he is almost done! Gig Guardian, one of his brick draws. Jiraigumo goes in, will it get the effect? Here we go! Heads, and it worked. 1250, there we go. Uh, you guys, I can't hear the sound. The sound is way over there. Like, I can barely hear anything. Because I don't like wearing the headphones. Alright, Battle Ox comes through. Battle Ox destroys the Whirlwind Prodigy. Alright. Kaiba might be a fraud. This is the game winning attack. Oh my god, just Fisher. Just do it. Yep, yep, yep. This is it. Still probably this is it, but we'll see. We'll see. Kaiba the fraud, is this real? Are we in a reality where he's a fraud? Okay, here comes the damage. Rush recklessly! He's been trying to do that the whole time! He's been trying to rush recklessly this entire time! He doesn't know. He Kaiba, don't attack it. You don't know. You'll take too much deflected damage. Don't do it, Kaiba. Don't be this. Don't be this guy. Kaiba is a fraud. He's a fraud. Get him out of my tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Paradox Brothers wins. This man is no per like he is no champion. He may have the strongest cards in the game, but the strongest cards don't matter if you don't know how to use them. Paradox Brothers, here we go. The next duel is Bandit Keith versus uh, Damian Draco, who's still in the tournament. Love it. Yeah, I am, I'm going to have a lot of fun. I, I opened up Photoshop by accident. Crap. And Photoshop takes forever to close, so that's no fun for me. 
All right. Nope. Photoshop, you're going to slow down my stream. Don't do that. Take up too much RAM. All right. Let's go ahead and get into our next fight. Sorry, I'm a little distracted at the moment. I, I just saw a very funny duel right now. So, you know, I got a good laugh. And when I get a good laugh, I, I need a little bit of time. So, Damian Draco is going to be taking on Bandit Keith. All right. The American champion. This will be the American champion's first showing in our tournaments. All right, so we'll see how Bandit Keith performs. And Damian Draco, we've already seen how he performs. He took down a literal ranked duelist. He took down my Valentine. So will he be able to take down another duelist or has he reached his limit? Just like how he took down one person, which was Kaiba, and then lost to Miss Chono immediately. Eh, who knows? Who the hell knows? All I know is I'm starting the duel, so... If you guys are done placing your bets, let's let's freaking watch it together. There we go. Okay, very good hand. He did not get a brick hand, which is super lucky for Mr. Uh, Bandit Keith. Where is opponent? Damian Draco did get a brick hand. That's crazy. Oh, that's a very good hand. He got Mechanical Chaser 1850 to the face. Oh, it is not looking good to be a Damian Draco fan right now. All right. Yeah, that's a that's a scary hand. Damian's in a lot of trouble. How is he bricked? He only runs one tribute monster, Black Dragon Jungle King. Granted, there's two copies of it, but still, starting the duel with two copies is insanely unlucky, if that happens. Hitting Call of the Haunted is really good. That's a good hit. Mass Dragon Black Pan is it a bunch of quick spells, maybe? It's Mountain. Yep, there we go. All right, with that, he could be Mechanical Chaser, yet he aims at the thing that is not Mechanical Chaser. Fair enough. You do you, you crazy person. All right, let's see here. Interesting. He's building up his field, but we'll see what happens. Mechanical Chaser in defense mode is a very sad sight indeed. Do you have anything else, Damien? More monsters, maybe? Yeah, Lesser Dragon will do it. That'll get rid of that problem. And that'll get rid of that problem. Fair enough. Okay. Well. In a little bit of trouble here, buddy, but I'm sure... Ooh, that's a good card. I was going to say, you're in a little bit of trouble right now, but uh, I'm sure you'll find your way out of here. And the attacks go through. Lesser Dragon is going to get hit by... Why do you do extra... What the hell? Okay, the AI does not know how to use Metal Morph and just wasted it. That was beautiful. Glad to know my opponent, uh, my, my AI is an idiot. And we're going to draw a card. And oh, if he had that earlier, he totally would have Monster Born to Tribute Summon it. But he did not get that earlier, so no luck. Flying Kamakiri, not going to work. Yep, that ain't going to do a damn thing. And now that that's come through, he's going to take some Blast Sphere damage. It's almost enough to end the duel, but Bandit Keith is bricked. Bandit Keith is bricked right when he's one turn away from ending this duel. Oh, what a shame. Oh, wait, it's probably only 1,200 damage, but still. All right, 1,400. No, it is the 14. Okay. The attacks go through. That's another 500 because of Deflected. If he draws a monster with 1,300 attack, he wins. He just needs a monster with 13 that he can normal summon. Bandit Keith draws. You know what? That might work out in the long run. That card might work out in the wrong one. In the long run, sorry. Let's see what happens. Fairy Dra- No! He got Kaiser Dragon! Oh, shit! He's going for game! Call the Haunted! He had to waste it early, because he knew he'd lose the duel if he didn't. He can't wait. Flying Kamikiri's still in attack mode. Mechanical Chaser's like his only hope. He has to top deck a Mechanical Chaser. Will he get it? Heart of the cards, he gets a Mechanical Chaser! He got it! He got it! He's going in, and Bandit Keith will take game number one! Really good duel from both characters. Damian Draco fought really hard, but he drew the one card he needed. The only card that could have won him that duel. I wonder where it came from. <laughs> I wonder. Alright, let's go ahead and get into game number two. I can't believe he drew it. I can't believe he drew it. All right, let's take a look. Very bad hand, in my opinion. Especially if you're going first. 
He's not going first, though, so it's not the worst if he draws a monster. He needs to draw any level 4 or lower monster. That works. We can use that. Tribute doll for your boss monster. Barrel dragon flip those coins. And... No, it, it didn't work. He tried, though. Gotta give the man credit. He tried. This is gonna be the first time we get to see Barrel Dragon in action. He can't attack this turn because of Tribute Doll, but next turn he can. I would try to hit that Mass Dragon with the Barrel Dragon just because Mass Dragon's so annoying. That is good. That is a good card to top deck. All right. Nope. You're going for the face down because you're afraid of Man Eater Bug. Okay. You got it. Let's see what it is. It's not Man Eater Bug, by the way. It's fine. Can't be It's the same thing, so I guess it's fine. Mecha Bunny is a weird choice. What are you doing? Why would you summon Mecha Bunny with Call of the Haunted? You could have saved that for Barrel... Yeah, you, these, you know what? The AI doesn't know how to save. It doesn't know how to manage cards. And Tribute Doll... Oh, that's why. We got Slot Machine. We got Barrel Dragon and Slot Machine on the same field. This is just like the anime. All right, what are you going to do now? Yeah, I'd be scared too. That's a freaking Barrel Dragon right there. What the hell are you going to do? It has 3,300 attack with only one Equip Spell on it. All right, here we go. We're going to use its effect again. Flip those coins. Almost run into my house with a vehicle. We're fine. Uh, and we're going to continue on. Flying Kamikiri can stall, but it will not matter. Twin Head Behemoth can definitely stall, but unless you have a bunch of equip spells, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Mirage Dragon comes through, and Mecha Bunny will die, but that's part of the plan. It's going to burn. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stall. There we go. Mecha Bunny is going to die again, and this time it'll do another burn. And ba finally, we can start hitting this guy for real because he's in attack mode. Go, Bandit Keith. Let the legend come back to life. You can even summon that in attack mode if you want. You have such a huge advantage right now. Oh, you're getting unlucky with those, though, bro. You're getting a little unlucky with those. Reinforcements! You lost slot machine! Oh, my God. He lost the slot machine. That is embarrassing. All right. And I like that he has... You know what? He saved Blasphere. He's like, let's see if I can bait my opponent to attack it. I'm going to make them take damage. I like it. I like that idea. Blasphere is like, I'll just go over here. That's a nice 1800 burn. And then he could just go after Twin Head and the face down with his effect. That is great. That is absolutely great. All right, cards. It's... Oh, he got it that time. Okay, there you go. And he hit Fairy Dragon. And he's smart enough to not go for the attack mode monster. I appreciate that. How does Damien win? One Fisher. One Fisher and an MST. That's it. A singular Fisher would help him. He didn't get it, but that is the card that would have saved him. It looks like Damien Draco's about to get knocked out. He should have won game number one, but Bandit Keith took it from him. Premature gets Slot Machine. He's going for game. Ban Call the Haunted's an unnecessary play, in my opinion, but he's going for game. And Barrel Dragon goes in. Will it get the effect? Will it work? It will! This duel is over! Damian Draco made it to round two, took down Maya Valentine, but he can't take down the American champion, Bandit Keith. Bandit Keith is going all the way. Barrel Dragon's such a good card. Absolutely brutalized. I agree. Alright, we are dabbing Rabbit right there. Thank you, Rabbit. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get over here. We're going to take a look at our next competitors. Who is up next, everybody, while I get rid of the faces? You tell me. I can hear you. I'm joking. All right, let's see. We got, uh, oh, Mokuba, of course. Bandit Keith will be moving forward. Mokuba Kaiba will be taking on the third-ranked character, Shoddy. Will Shoddy's Millennium deck be able to take down Mokuba, or will Mokuba get Seiyaru again and win the duel? All right, let's see. Mokuba, where are you? There he is. And I need Shoddy. Shoddy in our universe is ranked third in the world. He uses his Millennium Key to understand more about his opponents. And he can honestly beat most characters with the Millennium deck. So we'll see how he performs today. Where are you? That doesn't mean I'm going to have an easy time finding him. There he is. All right, let's go ahead and let's get to the duel, everybody. Shoddy versus Mokuba. I'm excited to see what happens. All right, I'll look for their faces as we speak. You just need like two seconds. Like two measly seconds is all I need. Mokuba is ready. Don't worry. I know you can't see it. Don't worry. I, I've got you guys. I got you. You're scared. All right. And shoddy, shoddy. 
All right, we're all set. Giant Rat will be tanky enough to hold on to the field, though I think it might have been better to let it die. And let's see what happens. He already has Sayaru in his hand, so he just needs to find a way to summon it. Tribute set from Shoddy. I think I know what that card is. I know what that card is. You guys might not know. And we got the cra uh, dragon dwelling in the cave. It's not willing to attack despite the fact that, uh, yeah, most of the AI has been attacking defense mode monsters no matter what. Yeah, you guys already got this. All right, Giant Rat is in position to try and stall so he can get one of his bigger monsters. It makes sense. That's one of his better cards too. And we got Grey Wing. Grey Wing's going to go in thanks to the mountain buff. It's strong enough to take things down. And we got uh, Moe Cannon. It's gone. Is that our giant right on the left? Is that why? No, it's not. Aztecs! A thousand damage! Nice! And Monster Reborn is unnecessary. Why would you steal that unless you plan... You know what? If you use its effect or go in defense mode, you plan on tributing it, it makes a little more sense. All right, there we go. Next turn, he's probably going to tribute that. That's why. So, how are you going to do this, man? You're kind of in trouble here. You're in a lot of trouble here. The stone statue will not survive the next attack. I promise you that. And here we go. It's Serayu, whatever its name is. It takes down the stone statue. Grey Wing goes in. Sand Moth will not die. And they're not willing to attack the middle one because they're afraid of it, which is very understandable. So let's see what happens. And we have Premature Burial. Is there anything in the grave worth taking? The fuck are you doing? Sorry, but that is not appropriate. Do not... The hell is this guy doing? That is a hor... You paid 800 to lose even more life points. That's how I see that play. And I'm not wrong. You took 24 for that. You took 3,200 damage for that single play. I know that. Maybe there's like some weird, really complicated play I don't understand, but I think that was a bad one. You have a trap card. Okay, let's see if this trap proves it. Did you need to have less life points for a reason? Oh, no, it doesn't matter now. MST is here. All right, Saku goes through. Now he has to win for his brother, guys. If his brother's too weak, he has to take the reins and become the king of games. That way the, the Kaiba name lives on. Sand Moth goes in. Sand Moth hits Morphin Jar early. That's actually really good because now if he gets his Tribute Monster, he can use it to destroy the opponent. He did not. Oh, he got Tribute to the Doom! And Tribute to the Doom will destroy Sayaru. Good job. All right, there we go. The boss monster is dead. A very good hit. We have Lesser Fiend. We have Polly. It's time for one of Mokuba's mini boss monsters. Everyone say hello to. The Fiend Skull Dragon. With 2200 attack, it goes in, and there we go. And Castle Walls will not allow you to destroy that monster. Good play, honestly. Fiend Skull Dragon is his second strongest card. Thanks to Mountain, obviously. And tributing the shield for the Scorpion. It's gone! You Why'd you tribute the shield when there was another monster right there? Why is the AI so stupid? All right, he's going to use this to get rid of the fusion, but who cares? You lost everything to do it. All he has to do is normal summon and you lose, sir. Good day. Say, are you just end this duel? Mo oh, you, di you didn't have to summon Cyberjar. That's just being a jerk. All right, Mokuba Kaiba takes game number one against the third-ranked duelist, and honestly, that was a huge misplay from them. Huge misplay. Keeping the shield face down defense would have been the best thing. Never let, let it go. But AIs are usually really bad when it comes to zero attack point monsters. So we're going to game number two, everybody. Yeah, 100%, I agree. It's a dick move to summon Cyberjar like that. That's the AI showing off. All right. Good hand from Mokuba. I like this hand. It's a very solid hand. Basic sets, nothing wrong with that. Okay. He's he just needs Polly. He already has the, the fusion. Castle Walls is a good hit, especially with how defensive uh, his deck is. Yep. <clears throat> that that could have done a little more burn. Honestly, the black pendant helps a lot. We'll see if he gets a tribute though. No tribute, you're fine. Most of Shoddy's scariest cards are tribute monsters, so as long as he's not tributing, that means you're an advantage. Lesser Fiend is one of the best cards in the game and is going to be super helpful. In fact, it's another character's boss monster, which is hilarious to me. Mokuba can just have another character's rarest card just because he's freaking <laughs> Kaiba's younger brother and they're rich. They can buy whatever they want. All right, let's see. What do you got? Trap Hole? Trap Hole's not bad. Now, even if they do get the boss, who cares? Oh, goodbye. One of the weakest cards in his deck. And Giant Rat will die as well. So, Giant Rat, what is your plan with Lesser Fiend here? 
to get the rat. Okay, I would have gotten a whole different card, but you do you. And we're going to go ahead and destroy the, uh, the dragon dwelling in the cave. That's fine. And we're just going to chill for a bit. It looks like there's nothing going on. I'm just going to take a second to chill. This card's going to get banished, so Giant Rat can't use its effect. Good job, Lesser Fiend. There's a reason it's somebody else's boss monster. Her name's Nadia, for those of you that don't remember. She's from the Domino High Tournament. That is a very good card. That is a... Aw. Oh, you still got to attack, bro. You, you got to do it. Oh. There you go. All right. Beautiful play. Beautiful play. Shoddy has made a comeback, and now he doesn't know, but Mokuba's bricked. Mokuba's 100% bricked now. That was a good top deck. <laughs> I, I, I can't even be mad. That was just a good top deck. What are you going to do when that happens? All right. Yep. Use your flip effect. That's da You're damn right. That's what you're going to do. 800 damage. You, you got to have more monsters than this, right? Ah, they're defensive monsters, of course. All right. He can keep a loop going as long as uh, <clears throat> Mokuba never gets any good cards. He could just... Uh, yeah, he can just keep a loop going. Attack goes through, and Sand Moth is a very good defensive card, and it's going to survive due to Castle Walls. Castle Walls will keep it alive. There we go. It is looking good to be a fan of Shoddy right now. Even though I bet most of you bet on Mokuba since he won the first duel. All right, let's see what happens here. Yep, we're going to keep doing the flip thing. Do we have a tribute monster yet? Castle, or Call the Haunted. Why are we doing Call the Haunted? Are we going all in? Is that why? We're doing Call the Haunted. Okay, there we go. This is beautiful. Beautiful. The damage is beautiful. Um, and he knows he could just flip this monster every time. So I don't think Mokuba can win this. Mokuba doesn't know to go after the monster that can bounce him back. Oh, he can't use that card. That's only used with certain combos in his deck. It's a really good card when he gets the combo off, but it's terrible otherwise. Yeah. Go ahead. End this duel. Go ahead, Shoddy. I know. Now, one weakness of Shoddy, only his tributes have good attack. Most of his monsters have bad attack. However, with the Wasteland buff, it might just be enough now. Yep. 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 And there it is, everybody. The winner of game number two will be Shoddy. We're going to be moving on to game number three, and we're going to see who is a top eight competitor. Which one of these characters deserves top eight? Now, let's see what happens here. See, this is why Shoddy was able to win. He's more of a tactical duelist. He has combos that work really well. We're at, oh, that's a terrible hand for Mokuba. That is one of the worst hands I've ever seen. Oh, that's a good start. Granted, he's lucky to be going up against one of the few opponents that has no beaters other than his tributes. Okay, that saved the whole hand. That one monster saved the entire hand. Sand Moth, on the other hand, does not care. Yeah, Sand Moth could care less. Oh, we got a tribute. What is it going to be? Millennium Scorpion goes in, but Reinforcements takes down the Millennium Scorpion. He will not get started. Mokuba holds field advantage. Wow. He was pissed after that. Oh, he tried so hard, but he can't get it back. Mokuba holds him down. Okay, hold up. Premature Burial does not work. What is going on in this duel? Does he top deck a monster? Yep, that works. You can play that. You can even go defensive if you're scared. Nope, you want to do 15. 15's fine. Honestly, against this opponent, going aggressive is fine because most of their stuff is defensive. All right, let's see how they react. They have back row, though. You got to be careful. And you need two tributes just to get rid of, uh, to get out Seiyaru. Cave Dragon's good, though. Oh, you got rid of it. Oh, no, you didn't get rid of it because the Wasteland buff. Oh, no, he's going to start doing it again. He's got it. He's going to do it again. Wait, uh, yeah, I guess you could do that, but now you didn't. I guess you know they can't destroy you, so that's fine. Weird. You could have got rid of both, I think. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's weird. Let's find out what's happening. Flying Kamikiri's coming in. Yeah, try that one. Morphing Jar. You didn't even. You, didn't, you wasted that spell card, by the way. Unless you get your oh, unless you get your boss, and it was not a waste. Oh, he just got another Seiyaru, So oh, he could summon it. He's gonna get his boss. Seiyaru's coming. All right, twenty seven hundred attack points. It's a god at this point. What do you do against your opponent's god card? That's right. <laughs> That's right. You don't forget that monster aborn. Let's steal the boss monster. The boss is on the wrong side of the field. 
MST to make sure nothing bad happens. Goodbye, Call of the Haunted. Which could have been chained, honestly, but he would have chained MST to the chain of Call of the Haunted, so it actually didn't matter if he activated Call of the Haunted. And 27. I don't think there's a single card in your deck that could save you, Mokuba, unless you draw Dark Hole. That's like the only thing. Dark Hole is the one card. Horrible top deck. Absolutely horrible. And go ahead and end it. You have everything you need. You're going to win with a Morphing Jar at this point. Jesus Christ, stop doing that. That's so mean. And with the opponent's boss, Sayariu, he wins the duel. Shoddy will continue as we expected. He is a good duelist, I warned you. Shoddy can duel. Alright, there we go. Just because he lost the first duel, does he was just a little unlucky. His opponent went ham. His opponent went ham. So, we're going to go ahead and check out our bracket after that duel. Let's see who's up next. The next competitor is Prana Taker, who honestly had the coolest intro so far, in my opinion. Uh, Prana Taker is going to be taking on Johnny Steps. Prana Taker is ranked number two in the world. Where Shoddy is ranked three, Prana is ranked two. All right, so let's see what happens here. Will Johnny's fusions be able to pull this off? He did take out Joey, so I'm hoping Johnny can do well. Or will Prana do it? Alright, here we go. And let us continue on. It is time for Prana Taker to take on Johnny Steps. Johnny Steps is on your screen. Prana's next. I'm looking for... She is the second ranked duelist, and we're going to see why today. Hopefully, she doesn't just mess up. That'd be horrible. All right, I found her. We're good. Sorry, she's a new character. It's harder to find. All right, Mr. Tomato is a good start. Polly, he already got it again. This man is so good at getting his fusion. It's time for Musician King. Musician King is going to give her a lot of trouble, I can already tell. All right, Mystic Tomato comes through, and Mystic Tomato makes the most sense. Why not just stall? Oh, my God. He used his whole hand. Master Kionchi. Her normal zombie is strong enough to take on... He, she could have won with just her basic zombie. Oh, wait, that's going to refill his hand. That's good. All right, let's see what happens. Prana is in a small amount of danger just because Musician King has field advantage. But that field advantage may not last. We'll see. Ukazi! Yeah, I gotta love Ukazi. Beautiful Head Huntress comes through. We're gonna start destroying the tomatoes of Mystic. One more Mystic Tomato would be a good idea. That's a good idea. All right, here we go. And we got Goblin Zombie. That's a better zombie card. It's not good enough, but it's better than what we've seen. And that's a really good card. That's something her and her counterpart have. That's the second time you've tried to kill Musician King and failed. It's so unlucky. You are getting so unlucky trying to take down the Musician King. He has protected it every time. He always gets the card he needs. Alright, just like that, Goblin Zombie is dead, but that's what she wanted because now she gets her... Okay, her mini boss monster. Oh wait, but it's because we got Haunted Shrine. We got Master freaking Kianchi. Alright, the mini boss monster makes ten times the sense now because if they get that monster on the field, it's over. All right, here comes the mini boss, Ill Bud, a card she's given to one of her family members. She had multiple copies. All right, so Ill Bud will hold the field for now, and next turn it's going to start making this duel go much faster. R R uh, Prana Taker, go ahead and show them what you can really do. All right, we got Millennium stuff. We're going to not summon. I thought you'd summon your Ill Bud, but I guess you're kind of dumb, and that's fine. Hex Seal goes in, it's over. It's over. There's nothing Johnny can do. Johnny already lost all of his fusion possibilities. What can he possibly do to come back in this horrifying duel? He's got to take on the scales himself. Herself. I don't know. All right. Illbud, please be summoned. Thank God. Illbud gets normal summon. Illbud summons the boss. Here comes Despair from the Dark. And there we go. Despair from the Dark a little too late for Halloween, but is here today. Illbud is on a roll right now. Alright, what are you going to draw? What do you draw? Master Kianchi, such a good card. Such a good card. And Master Kianchi gets no... Oh my god, full field. Doesn't matter which of the Black Forest. Game number one is going to the number two ranked duelist who is 
it's not number two anymore. Well, it might stay number two. It depends on who wins this tournament. The winner of the tournament becomes number one. And there we go. Despair from the Dark has taken it. So, that was pretty cool, but uh, we're going into game number two. If Johnny can try again to protect his monster and get luckier, he might be able to take down Prana Taker. But Prana shows that she does have a lot of good combos with her deck. That's interesting to know. Alright, let's see. We're going to probably Pato Greed if I were you. But you're not first, okay. Pato Greed, let's see what you can get. You got uh, no boss monsters, just beater monsters. And without your field spell, you can't hold advantage against the fusion monsters. Your field spell is the only thing that gives you that advantage. Okay. Well, you'll figure something out. As long as he doesn't fuse, you're fine. But he's fused every duel, so that's why I'm a little surprised he hasn't done it yet. MST comes through. Goodbye, Haunted Trend. That's one of your best cards. Uh, Beautiful Head Huntress goes through because reinforcements. Unafraid. Willing to go in. Metal Morph Super in. Okay. Metal Morph gives you a ton of attack. You do 1,500 damage. And you're rocking a big old 1,900 attack stat. Which is going to be very hard to overcome without the Wasteland. Of course, you could just MST that. Yeah, get rid of that Metal Morph. How dare you buff your beautiful Head Huntress. Zombie Master, go. Zombie Master, get Zombie Master. And then Zombie Master, get Master Kianchi. Yep. What a play from Prana Ta Wow, that's a lot of burn. 1,500 burn comes through. He could have waited, honestly. I would have waited. She's going to get five monsters eventually. Let's be real. If jo uh, Johnny can't fuse, he only has one card in his hand. So his whole deck is based around fusion. He doesn't have a chance of fusing. She's already summoned a billion monsters. Yeah, he burned her a little bit. And unless that card has 2k defense, he's done. He is 100% done. The Wasteland's coming through as well. All right, goal with an appetite. Here comes the damage. It does not have 2,000 defense. It has exactly enough to lose. And Prana Taker takes game number two. All right, here we go. Prana Taker will be moving up to top eight of the tournament. So let's get up to our bracket. She did very good in her first duel on camera. I was a little worried about her deck, but it seems like she knows how to use it. Thank God. Unlike some people. I'm looking at you, Weevil. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and check it out. Prana Taker moves forward. The next duel is going to be Diesel Kane. We've been waiting to see this guy duel again. This man has won the Champions Carnival, which got him the invite to this big Duelist Kingdom tournament. He has one of the scariest decks we've ever seen, and he is going to be a menace. Let's see if he can continue to be a menace in this tournament. But he is going against the Mimic of Doom, which is one of the mercenaries. One of the mercenaries did take down the uh, did take down Seto Kaiba, so the mercenaries are pretty good. I will look for Diesel Kane as we speak, and uh, I will also look for the Mimic of Doom. I found one of them so far. Now Diesel Kane did win last week's tournament, so his deck is very good and has gotten a new promotional card. If you were there in the beginning, you got to see that new promotional card. So, let's see if he can put it to work. If I can find him. Found him. We're good. Here we go. Let's go ahead and let's start this duel. Alright. It is all set up. And I need their faces. That is a thing I forgot. I need their faces. I need the Mimic of Doom's face, mostly. Beautiful. What a beautiful man. Alright, we got Optoclops and we got some sets. That's always good. And it looks like the Mimic of Doom has his own cards. He's got an equip spell. 2000 goes through, but MST waited. I like that. The patience on that MST was very good, and this shows why Diesel Kane is a champion. And we're just going to set Magic Jammer. I could assume that. That was probably right. And good uh, monster. It is immune to traps. He did use that. Uh, honestly, most of the cards we're going to see today are the same cards he used in the Champions Carnival. Because it was just a super solid deck. That's not a bad card, but I don't think it has a use here. Ah, you wasted brain control, in my opinion. And, oh. Wait, no, you got you played your opponent. Never mind. Never mind, you played your opponent, but that card at least doesn't die because immune to traps. Beautiful card. MST goes through. Goodbye, Magic Jammer. Okay, UFO Turtle with this card is a brutal combo. 
Unless you can get yourself a monster with 1600 attack, you're in trouble. And even if you do, you're still in trouble. Alright, let's see what he gets. He gets a card that's actually really good. Element Doom is here. Element Doom is going to make a mistake, in my opinion. You definitely didn't want to kill that, because he has a combo with that. And he, uh... He, uh... Hmm. Yes. He's got two monsters now, but are they worth it? Fisher, yep, yep, they're worth it. Go in, win the duel. I was going to say, he was just going to crash anyway, but yeah. Uh, Mimic loses game number one, for sure. 100%. Just, Diesel Kane is a monster. <laughs> Diesel Kane is a goddamn monster. He's a good duelist. Very good duelist. All right. Well, now that that's happened, let's go into game number two. Will Diesel Kane continue his rampage, or will the Mimic find a way? That's a better hand for the Mimics, but I don't know about that field spell. I think your opponent also likes that field spell. Just saying, as a friend. I think you both happen to like the darkness. Potter Greed's a damn good top deck. Octoclops loves the darkness. MST destroys your own field spell. Yeah, that uh, doesn't make a difference, actually, but you're a weird guy. You know that? You spent your own MST on your own spell and trap card. That's just really bad. Up, oh, you got it. And goodbye, Octoclops. All right, let's see what he gets. Element Doom is okay, but I think just go with the treasure chest. Yeah, you're a mim he's literally a mimic guy, right? So it makes sense that he has a monster disguised as a treasure chest. Yeah, there we go. And Des Feral Limp is tied, but I'm, I'm guessing that there's some good back row back there he's just holding on to. You can use that to stall for, mo uh, for stuff. Nope, you're willing to crash. And he did not have anything. Diesel Kane's in trouble. Diesel Kane does not have any back row worth using. At least maybe it's a specific equips or... I actually have no clue what he couldn't be using right now. Tribute to the Doom is nice. What does he throw away? UFI would have kept UFO Turtle. Just saying. Oh, you have Mr. Tomato. It's fine. He has Mr. Tomato. Same thing. All right. Mr. Tomato comes through. Oh, he got both of his Mimic cards. And there it is. Mimstic Tomato will get Mr. Tomato. He needs an Earth Monster to negate the effect. He has no Earth Monsters. So Element Doom is not getting the elements it needs. Forceful Sentry, we're going to lose Dark Mimic level 3. That's a shame. And you're doing this because you know there's a combo, don't you? Why are you? Okay, now you're confusing me. What are we doing this for? Element Saurus. A lot of Element cards are in these tournaments. We have Element Doom versus Element Saurus. But which one will come out on top? I already know based on that hand, but we don't know what Diesel Kane's holding back. He could be getting his tribute monsters for all we know. All right, goodbye to the Mimic. But the Mimic wanted to die to draw a card. That will work. Technically, that top deck will work. But I'm telling you right now, be careful. Your opponent loves your field spell as much as you do. And you already spent an MST on it. Apparently, he doesn't. Oh, he threw away his promotional card. He threw away the promotional card. What a shame. All right, with the promotional card gone, here comes Cruel. They're not willing to crash. Why is it in attack mode then? And here it comes. Oh, what? Why didn't you choose the promotional card? Oh, because you have the better one. His original promotional card in his hand, the Trihorn Dragon. Who needs Dark Magician when you have Trihorn? All right, we're going to need to set that. Ugh. Cruel still exists, so this card's still going to be very helpful in this case. Mimic will give him more cards. He needs those. Okay, interesting card to top deck. You're willing to risk it, and I don't blame you. Heart of the cards. Let's see what happens. Ooh, you did it. You, you risked it, and nothing bad happened. I love it. That's crazy. Oh, you have a lot of draw power, but not a lot of anything. Okay. I know you're baiting. But now, even if you get your boss, you won't have enough power because, oh my god. Oh, he's going for game now. He's like, oh, you're baiting nobody. I don't care. You're not baiting because he didn't even attack you with the weaker monster. He wants game. Diesel Kane is not an idiot. Okay. This man has taken another dub and is going to top eight. That is beautiful. Diesel Kane is a damn good duelist. With his promotional Trihorn Dragon, he made it a possibility. Alright, so we're going to move Diesel Kane forward. 
The next duel will be Bacora versus Pegasus. Bacora Rio versus the host of the tournament, Maximilian Pegasus. Pegasus is the deck I am the most worried to watch because I don't know how the AI is going to use tunes in this game. I don't know how they're going to react to tunes. I don't know how they're going to work with tunes. We're going to hope for the best. I'm a hopeful guy. I like to have dreams. Let me just hope. I'm finding the character. I am having trouble finding the character. All right. All right. We'll find it right now. He's in here somewhere. He's just hiding from me. Ah, there he is. It's always when they're in the corner. When they're in the corner, it's harder for me to find. All right, let's go ahead and let's get this duel started. It's going to be Bakora versus Pegasus. I'm going to find their faces as soon as I can. Bakora should already be on your screen. Pegasus will come. All right, let's watch these two duel. Okay, interesting. Manju's not a bad start to make sure you get your stuff. You still get your stuff, but you are dead. Yeah, see, that's why Manju's not a bad start. You summon something and you get to keep something. That's always good. That's a very good card. It's all up to luck now, but... Oh, don't waste your Emma. They really don't have... They do not have freaking... Uh, what do they call that? Man... Oh, he lost Black Illusion Ritual! Oh, crap, but he got Tomb World. But he gained Tomb World. That That is probably worth it. That is probably worth. Okay, not too bad from uh, old, uh, not too bad from old Pegasus here, but we'll see what his opponent, uh, Bakora, has in store for him. Bakora has his boss monster. And his boss now has a ton of attack points. Actually, it's an ungodly amount now. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. All right, well, you're in a lot of danger, but I'm sure you'll figure something out. Ah, oh, you lost your funny rabbit. That's a, that's a shame. All right, we're going to draw a card. Let's see. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. Seeing him draw that card actually just breaks my heart. Gemini Elf doesn't matter. That's a Tomb World, not a Tomb Kingdom. You're going down, sir. This man got his boss super early. You're just lucky his monsters don't have good beater stats. You would have died already. All right. Oh, man, that sucks. His only comeback card is gone. He t oh, wait, the Bird of Magical Thorn. White Magical Hat wins in the duel with the Bird. I love it. I forgot about Magical Thorn even being on the field. All right, there we go. Bacora takes game number one. I was worried about Pegasus, but Mr. Clown lost too. I'm not worried about the host losing. I am not worried about a host of a tournament losing. That's like if I lost. It's not, it's not a problem. All right, game number two. Will Pegasus be able to come through? Eh, he needs a lot of cards to make this hand work. This hand has a lot of crap in it. No offense. Yeah, he's going to need a lot. He's going to need a lot. Oh, that's halfway there. You wasted that, in my opinion. You should have saved that for later. I promise you. You don't know who you're facing. Bakora has such an annoying back row. All right. He's going to go in for the burn damage. Doesn't realize the opponent has a tank. No dragons on the field, so nothing to pipe up. Let's see if he gets lucky and draws what he needs. Eh, that's all right. No, it's not. It's not the worst card. At least he can actually summon it. But he's he's just buying time right now. He needs to get time for his Tomb World. Okay, more burn. At least you're doing deflected damage. Why Magical Hat's here too. He knows that you can't beat him. You're all defensive right now. Mimikat, I don't think that matters. Yep. Again, you need Tomb World for most of your deck to even work. You have to pay for Tomb World, and then you have to pay to play Tomb World because of Chain Energy. It's going to be so brutal. Oh, that's a good card. Oh, no! I wanted to see Relinquish! Come on, man! I want to see the boss monster. One of them, at least. The mini boss. Come on! Ah, you little bastard. <laughs> we better get a Tomb World. I swear to God. We were so close. Chain Energy. He's just setting... Oh, that better not be another Morphing Jar. I swear to God. He's already lost so much. Alright. Not even willing to set Waboku. 
It's Van Earbug, but that can't destroy both monsters. You didn't you'd even destroy the one with the more defense. Oh, because wait, no. Tributing it? No. You're a weird guy. You're a weird guy. Let's see what he hits. Hit Relinquished at least. Okay, at least he hit Relinquished. He doesn't need it anymore. Get that shit out of here. And the damage is very good from Bakora. Alright. Alright, let's see. Tomb cards don't matter unless you get Tomb World, and he's not getting Tomb World anytime soon. All Bakora needs is his tribute, and he wins the duel. No, Bakora's paying a lot of life points, but he's not getting his tribute. You could play that, but you gotta be very careful just because your opponent is... Look, he could giant germ you to death in his own way. Honestly, I would have saved Toon Gemini up and waited for a dark hole. You, you, I would not want to fight fight this field at all. You're running out. Look, you don't have that many. So oh my god, you put that in attack mode because you're an idiot. The end of the duel is near. Pegasus's end is near, everybody. He's asking for the opponent to summon five monsters and take 500 burn. Oh, he had one in his hand or in the grave already. Still. Yeah. Oh, he's asking for it. He's asking for it. Go get him. Go get his ass. Waboku. He held one Waboku back. Pegasus already lost Darko. Was that the No, that was the last duel, not this duel, buddy. Your memory ain't so good, but that's okay. Mine isn't either. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and do this. We got ourselves uh, Gemini Elf's effect. We did hit the giant germ I was talking about. Maybe you could play defensively now. Thank you. Yeah, put those two in defense. You don't need them. <clears throat> no, you don't have the life points to be paying for this. You can't you can't afford to play a useless card. That card is useless. What are you doing? It has no value. He got his monster, by the way. Oh no, that's the other one. That one's gonna end the duel. That one almost ended the duel right there. He's he's ending the duel. It's over. It's over. Giant germ game. Alright, that's over. At least he's smart enough to end it with Giant Germ. Bakora is doing really good in this tournament. He's top eight. The host is better at hosting than he is at dueling, which is why he hired, hired so many mercenaries. But those mercenaries are pretty much gone. All that's left is Paradox Brothers, which honestly, they're really good. I got to give them credit. Paradox Brothers, when they do not draw their bricks, are really good. And it doesn't seem like they're going to be drawing their bricks. So let's go ahead and get into the next duel. We are now in top eight of the tournament. Your eight strongest competitors in Duelist Kingdom are Diesel Kane, Bakura Ryo, Prana Taker, Shoddy, Bandit Keith, Paradox Brothers, Yugi Mudo, and Taya Gardner. All right, Yugi Mudo is going to be taking on Taya Gardner right now. Let's see what happens between these two. Will Yugi Mudo's new deck be able to take on Taya, or will Taya's new powered up deck be able to take down Yugi? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let us see. Where the hell's Taya? That's Tristan. That's not Taya. She's in the corner, isn't she? I always miss them in there in the corner. Yep. All right, there we go. Taya Gardner and Yugi are set up. I am going to uh, go ahead and get over to our game right now. Let's go ahead and start this duel. It's Taya versus Yugi in a very fun duel. Let's watch these two duel. Taya should be on your screen. Yugi is on your screen. Both of these characters have dueled before, but which one will win in this tournament? That's a very good opening hand for Yugi. And he's making it better and he's not dumb. Thank God. But is he? Yeah, he wouldn't do it on the first turn. They don't usually do that. All right, Taya, what's your answer? Yeah, that's a good answer. But she doesn't know what's coming. In fact, she has no idea that he already got his lucky combo this early. Oh, shit. And here we go. The ultimate monster in Yugi's deck. The Black Luster Soldier. A card I thought would weaken him because in this deck, having a freaking ritual card would definitely slow you down. But he got super lucky in game number one. Donzalu could also toss a card from her hand, hopefully an equip spell. 
Nope. Well, hitting Shining Angel is really good, actually. Blackluster Soldier is a hell of a card to overcome, but if anyone can beat it in attack points, it's Taya. She needs some time, though. She already lost Trap Hole. She lost Shining Angel. Mystic Tomato's coming out to play. Things are getting rough. Oh, Shinigen weakens the monsters, but it does not matter. Big damage from Don Zalug, and that is going to leave her with almost no life points left. She lost her boss! The Wing Weaver is gone! All right. We got Shining... Okay, it's not going to get strong enough. She's just doing this to kill a monster. All right, Don Zalug will die unless she has a trap. No, okay, it's over. It's over. BLS, go do your thing. Go do your thing. Yugi, I think Yugi just got lucky in game number one. I think you got a very lucky hand. The fact that instead of it being a brick, it turned into the monster itself was just lucky as hell. So, that is uh, going to be it. We're going to go ahead and take a, a victory for our buddy here. Yugi takes game number one. I believe when they dueled before, it did take till game three, though, for Taya to take him down. So, she probably let him have the win, but we'll see. Let's see if he bricks up a little more this time. Nope, he has the best equip spell in the game in his hand right now. Rhoda. Rhoda's going to give him a Sasuke. Sasuke's fine. And a Goblin of Loyalty will just stay there. Shining Angel, Malevolent Nuzzler, Malevolent Nuzzler, and Shine Palace. Now who's going to... Oh, yeah, she can take on BLS now. You're going down, Yugi. You're going down. She's not scared. She'll fight you. But Yugi has the best equip spell in the game. One equip is better than your three equips. Yep. Yep. And Malevolent Nuzzler, she'll pay 500 to make sure she still has an equip after this. Um, but as long as his life points are lower, he's going to take advantage of his equip spell. Main of Moonlight is pretty good. Monster Reborn is wasted, as usual. Main Phase 2 Monster Reborns are usually wasteful. This one was one of them. There was no back row. You could have just summoned it to make sure that they, she had no monster. She has back row this time, but I don't know if it'll matter against good old Sasuke. He has one of his brick cards in his hand now. And Woboku, of course. If I were you, I'd set either of those cards. Don't summon it. Oh, yeah, he could still destroy it, even though it's not... Yeah, because it's not by battle. Okay, you're not going to say. You're going to play aggressively. You see, I understand. Aggressive plays sometimes work. You gotta be careful with her. She can pop off in one turn if she loses enough life points. Because the only reason you have advantage is because she's just playing cards waiting for you to run out of, or run out her life points. Alright, Shining Angel. Hoshin again buffs and nerfs everybody, but it's too late for that card to matter. Sasuke goes in for massive damage, but now Megamorph is uh, ruined, but it did its best. And goodbye, Element Valkyrie. So she is in a very bad spot, but one equip spell and one monster is how she does it. No! She drew two equip spells! Taya loses to Yugi in their second duel in a big tournament! In top eight, Yugi knocks out Taya Gardner! It looks like. Hold up, baby. Nope. Okay, I was gonna say, maybe he hits a card that, like, lets her do something. It is over! She needed the top deck a monster she could summon. She top deck Dark Witch. Very unlucky. Very unlucky. All right, very good duel from good old Yugi Muto. He managed to pull it off, and he got revenge on Taya. Not like evil revenge, but like, haha, you beat me before, but I beat you this time. Friendly revenge. So, Taya Gardner, who is still really good, she made it to top eight of this tournament, uh, is now gone. And she is going to have to take a break as Yugi goes to semis. I feel like he's been to semis in every tournament I've ever thrown, no matter what deck he used. The next duel is Paradox Brothers, the guys who knocked down uh, Seto Kaiba versus Bandit Keith, the guy who also knocked down a guy who knocked down Seto Kaiba. Fair, funny enough, Damian Draco. So Paradox Brothers are ready to duel. And now we just need uh, Bandit Keith. Now let us go ahead and start this duel right up. Let's see who wins. I'm looking for their faces as we speak. I am struggling. I found it. All right. Paradox starts with the okay-ish hand because you could tribute. He's not going to tribute doll, but he can tribute doll. So that's actually not that bad. And Pot of Greed is good. Let's see what they do with Pot of Greed. Mechanical Chaser is a very good card. Normally. 
But given the opponent you're going to be going up against, I fear for your life. Just as a friend, I'm fearing for you, Bandit Keith. You have no idea. Oh, they could have fused, but you have no idea what's coming. It's going to be the Sui Jin. He can't attack this turn, but next turn he's going to start taking advantage and destroying your life. Hopefully you have Fisher. You do not have Fisher. Okay. Bandit Keith's in a small amount of danger. The smallest amount. Micro amount of danger. Micro amount. Might be more than I realize. Yeah, he might be in a lot of danger. <laughs> he might be in a lot of danger. Bandit Keith's in some trouble here. All right, we'll figure it out, though. He's got Premature. Okay. Premature is a thing. He's got seven completed, but you can't attack the monster. He knows. He knows, though. He can hold the field with Mechanical Chaser. He got a seven completed now, and he knows what to do. But uh, Suijin's going... Oh! He had room for it! Oh, no! Suijin, you're going to cost him so many life points! Oh, I'm into this now. Hold on. I'm sitting up. I am sitting up. Jirai Gumo is gone. Big loss. This is going to be huge. Overdrive is gone. That's fine. It's just an overdrive. We can live without that. Call the haunt. No, we can't live without that. That's overdrive. That's our buddy. What are you talking about? Come on. All right. Overdrive is here. And guess what, everyone? It is time. Sui Jin is gone. 2,500 massive burn. And now he's left wide open. No card to save him from the onslaught that is upon him right now. And the onslaught will be these two monsters. He didn't have another one. He does break. It's off. It's obvious. I don't know if it was worth tributing that time, but he didn't feel like tributing. Unless he just has a bunch of spells and traps he can't play because he filled up his back row. That's a hell of a top deck. Holy crap. All right. He's back in the duel after that one play. I'm not joking. That one play brought him all the way back. And goodbye, Overdrive. Just because he can't attack Sui Jin, which buys him time to get equipped spells or time to get better monsters. And Mecha Bunny does 500 burn, I guess. That's a play. Technically, he can win by Mecha Bunny. Slowly but surely, he could win by Mecha Bunny. It would cost him a lot to keep them in attack mode, though. It might be better just to set them and let them be attacked. Time Machine! He's got two bunnies! He did it! Oh, wait, but it's face, it's face up, right? It's face up, though. He could use it for tribute, though. He could use it for tribute. Oh, boy. This man's got a million bunnies. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? If he gets Barrel Dragon, Barrel Dragon's one of the cards that can beat Sui Jin. Not by attack, but, you know, by effect. All right, attack goes through. We're going to get rid of you. We're going to flip that bunny for damage. We're going to flip that bunny for damage. One more bunny ends this duel. Tribute summon. We don't need bunnies. We got Barrel Dragon. Barrel Dragon, do your thing. Beautiful. Barrel Dragon does his thing. And that is... Oh, oh, that's that's just unnecessary. That's just unnecessary. You wasted your call to Haunted. You wasted it. It's over. The duel was over either way. Barrel Dragon just, just flip a few coins, pop this guy. We don't even need to look at him anymore. He does not matter. Okay. Yeah, that, that happens. Attacks go through. That will work. If he, if he doesn't summon or if he does summon, he loses either way. And Mechanical Chaser gets to end the duel. That's a little overkill, bro. What are you doing? He's being a jerk. He's being a dick. I don't know why he did that. I don't know why he did that. There was no need. All right, game number one goes to Bandit Keith. He definitely is going to try and take out these mercenaries. If all the mercenaries lose, somebody will be receiving a prize at the end of this. All right, going first. Here we go. Interesting. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Boshian, for being a sub. I appreciate you. All right, so it seems like an okay hand from uh, the Paradox Brothers. Let's see if they can handle... Uh, that's just Overdrive. That's not too bad. Yeah, you get yourself Gate Guardian for that. That's a pretty good start. Overall, that's a pretty good start. All right, we're going to do a turn change. We're going to find out what happens. That's a really good card. Jirai Gumo comes through. I know it's risky, but in this tournament, it's just straight up good to having a good beater monster. And it looks like they're going to be just fine. And 1,600 damage comes through. Monster Aborn comes through. Monster Aborn steals Overdrive. Overdrive is on the wrong side of the field now. And that is no good. So, what are you going to do? Now that all the cards are on the wrong side of the field. Oh, you're in danger. Oh, Bandit Keith's in danger. They have no combos. They have nothing to show. Oh, Sangha. Nope, we're... Oh, Cannon Soldier for game. Mecha Bunny to stall. Mecha Bunny is literally the only reason you're still in this duel. This duel would be over right now if it wasn't for the bunny. 
I'm not even joking. The Cannon Soldier, extra 2,000 burn after destroying a single monster. Three uh, direct attacks, and then the 2,000 burn. It's too much. Tribute's all for funsies. Can't... Uh, okay. Why not? Okay, Sanga's here. What the hell are you going to do, Bandit Keith? This is the worst field I've ever seen you have to face. Monsterborn is desperate. Mecha Bunny, I, it's adorable, but I don't know how that's going to help. I need a, I need a real, real play here. Tribute to the Doom will help, but it's not actually going to... Oh, you had one in your hand. That's unlucky. Okay. I'm sure that was the best you could do. That was literally all he had left. I'm sure that's all he had left. He didn't do that because he wanted to. He did it because he had to. So, yeah, you could end this duel now. Go ahead, Paradox Brothers. Go ahead. Just take him down. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Go ahead. Yep. Mecha Bunny going the wrong way. And there it goes. Jirai Gumo ends this duel. I told you, when they get Jirai Gumo, that's when they start winning duels. Because the Jirai Gumo is really good. We're going to game three, baby. These guys might still keep going. That means there might not be a prize at the end of this tournament. Come on. Let's see it happen, Paradox Brothers. Can you take it? Can you take it? Here we go. Game number three. Yeah, these guys make you earn their victory. They, they can overpower you. They can destroy you. They can steal you. They have boss monsters that are basically cheating. Like, and that's a god tier hand. They already have Jirai Gumo. What are you going to do? Pot of Greed. He even has better cards. Let's see. Yep, Jirai Gumo is already here. What can you possibly do, sir? How will you stand up to this behemoth of a mon- Oh, fuck. Yep. Finally, it happened. Bandit Keith runs so many tributes. I was waiting for this. He finally bricked. And with that brick will be the end of his life. You're not willing to attack with Jirai Gumo all of a sudden? What, all of a sudden you worried about your life points over your opponent? He's super bricked. It finally happened. I was wondering why Bandit Key was getting so lucky. It finally happened. He could have had game right now. If he was just ballsy enough to attack uh, last turn. He's still not ballsy enough to attack. Though next turn he will be because it will be for game. Alright Bandit Key, top deck a monster or loose? Brain control, uh, top deck a monster or lose? Lose, you ch He threw. He paid 800 to do nothing. Tribute to the Doom for guaranteed game. Doesn't matter what that card was now. It was Mechanical Chaser. Game's over. And it is over. Paradox Brothers are going to semifinals. We're getting them out of here. Get him out. Bandit Keith is a good duelist, but he is also a bricky duelist. Everyone's made that brain control play, so I'm not that surprised. Yeah, but he is a bricky duelist, and it finally came back to bite him. I'd love to see what his hand was, though. That would have been interesting. Was it Launcher Spider, Slot Machine, Barrel Dragon, Zoa, Metal Zoa? I, I, I can see it. He has so many tributes. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next fight of our tournament. Next fight of, uh, fight of top eight will be... Um... Uh, Shoddy versus Prana. Shoddy is ranked three in the world. Prana is ranked two. Which one will continue? This should be a good duel. These two characters are pretty evenly matched. They're both new characters that you guys have not seen before. So I'm pretty excited. All right. Prana taker. Do, do, do. That's not how it works, Andros. Sorry. And let's go ahead and uh, get this started. Prana taker versus Shoddy. All right, looking at Shoddy's hand, he has a, a pretty good hand, in my opinion. Wasteland helps his monsters. Morphin Jar gets him a new hand because it wasn't actually that good, but Morphin Jar fixes the whole thing. Um, that's a really good hand from Prana, though. Oh, well, actually. But, but actually, sir, that Magic Jammer had maximum value because we know a Morphin Jar is coming. Malevolent Nuzzler might be drawn, though. Oh, no, they're not going to have the ability to do that. It was negated. Morphin Jar comes through. They lose everything. Wait, not against this opponent. This is the wrong opponent to Morphin Jar. Fear from the dark goes in for 19. Okay. Yeah, this is not the opponent you want a Morphin Jar. Her boss monster and the mini form of her boss monster are very good. Very good at this. Oakley dokley. We got Mystic Tomato. We got Black Pendant. Black Pendant makes you a beater monster. We're going in. That did not work. We're going in. That did not work. Nice try, though. That is, This is the strongest rat in the world. We're going in. That did not work. Nice try, though. 
Literally, this rat took on three hits and won every single one, but I don't see a tribute in your hand, so unless you top deck a tribute real soon, you're in a lot of trouble. That's a good card, but it's too damn late. You already used all your defensive cards that could have saved its life. All right, we're going to see who gets the better monster, Giant Rat or Mystic Tomato. All right, Mystic Tomato gets Mystic Tomato. Fair enough. Giant Rat gets Giant Rat. Fair enough, but we know he can't get another one. He already has another rat in his hand. So, Mystic Tomato, what are you going to get? Goblin Zombie, that's not that strong. Rat, Millennium Shield, if, if you had a way of putting... Oh, you had a play! That was such a good idea! That monster would, would have popped your freaking monster. Oh, crap. There was a play there with the monster. Its effect says get rid of the monster to get rid of the monster. But, because it had more defense than attack, but it did not work out. It did not work out. That is so sad. Prana Taker takes game number one. That trap hole saved the day. That trap hole literally saved the day. Okay. Well, that is A-OK. -okay. Let's move on to game number two. It makes sense for rank two to beat rank three. The Millennium Key versus the Millennium Scales. The Key has lost the first game. All right. Let's see what happens in the second game. We're going to draw some cards. Oh, he got his Millennium Golem this time. That's one of his better monsters. A 2k beater is pretty good in this tournament. Unless you're fighting Teya or Yugi, apparently. They went ham. Alright, let's see. Zombie Master is beautiful, and the field spell helps both characters, but his monsters are very defensive, so... Oh, but you don't care. Oh, what the fuck are you doing? If the opponent is buffing their opponent... Uh, I mean, if the player is buffing their opponent, they end up doing that, which is just lame. It's just lame. All right, let's see what they get. That's actually not a bad. That, like, guarantees you your, your mini boss monster, so that's not too bad. But let's see what she does with her time. Master Kianchi, of course. Master Kianchi will not be able to break through this wall. So, now that you uh, realize you have to deal with the boss, or mini boss monster, how are you going to do it? Because Millennium Golem's got a massive 2k attack stat and a good defense stat on top of that. So, for once, he's taking advantage of the duel. He is not on the losing side. Let's see how she answers. You can chain it, I guess. I mean, you don't need the defense, but you could do it. 2,900 defense is pretty insane, after all. And ill boy, her mini boss, mini boss versus mini boss. Her wins by a hundred, 100 points. Okay. And funny enough, her mini boss is a card she gave to a family member, and it's their freaking ultimate monster. It's their boss monster. So, goodbye. That was the luckiest top deck of Fisher I've ever seen. Giant Rat comes through. Like, actually seen. Because we could see their hand. That's crazy. Alright, now what will you get? Giant Rat versus Master Kianchi. That, that's not a good fight for you. Alright, let's try again. Let's try to get something good here. That card can be good, but it's all up to luck whether or not you could use it right. You need a good defensive monster to make that work. Technically, you can just get back your mini boss, and that'll be good enough. Don't use the effect now. Just use the mini boss's attack stat. There you go. All right. Shoddy looks like he can actually take a game off of freaking uh, Prana Taker. Despite the fact that she was undefeated till Kaiba showed up, and now Kaiba's just a joke in my opinion. Goal with an appetite. Goodbye, Millennium Golem. Barely by 100. So, this card's effect is all you have left to rely on. And the only way that's going to work is if you can get a good... No, well, actually. Yeah, no, that works out just fine. That was a good top deck. All things considered, that was a good top deck. Now what's your opponent going to do? Goblin Zombie? Oh, they're smart enough to not attack with the weakest monster. Good for them. But uh, you're not getting past that Millennium Shield anytime soon. Sam Moth will also try to hold the field. Probably will not, but it's trying. Millennium Shield holds the field for now. Prana Taker does run a lot of big monsters and equip spells, though. No! She's going to go around it! She has a card to go around it! She's just going to use the horse! Oh my god, are you kidding me? She just happened to top deck the one card in her deck that goes around it? That's stupid. That's actually stupid. I can't believe it. She's like, oh, I'll win the duel eventually. I don't care. You want this to take 30 turns? I'll do it. Nope, if she did, she'd have a fusion monster, wouldn't she? But there's no fusion deck, as you can see way up there in the top right corner. Oh man, that is hilarious. I can't believe she got the one card to make it so she could still win, even though he has that. 
Yeah. Plus, Spirit Reaper would be a really busted this early in the duels. There's not enough monster destruction or monster clear stuff like that in this uh, early tournaments. Maybe starting uh, next week, we could start doing stuff like that. All right. Yep, 500. As long as she can still go in, she will win the duel. No one's going to deck out. She will have the ability to win this duel with just that monster alone. And nothing he gets will matter now. Unless he gets a tribute monster on to tribute this monster and then destroy the rest of the field. But that monster has to have at least 2,200 attack points. All right, well, we're getting rid of the back row. That's always good. And all, obviously, she's probably waiting for her boss monster as well to spare from the dark. Because she has fear from the dark, but she needs to spare. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, they're not smart enough to know they have to destroy that monster. Lots of deflected damage coming through, though. She's getting kind of low in life points, too. It's kind of interesting. Because, yeah, these things do a lot of deflected damage. So if she keeps taking that deflected damage, it's going to hurt. All right, 500 goes in. 600 goes in. And the monster's gone. She's down to 2k life points. We're at Duelist Kingdom level, which is perfect for our tournament today. We're going to draw a card. Eh, I don't know about that card. I mean, she's going around your wall. She's finding a way to just go around. She's pulling a Pegasus right now. And now she's doing 700 damage, and that is much better. That is much, much better. I forgot, this thing's a warrior, not a rock. That makes sense. That card ain't so good. <laughs> that, that's one of her, his bad cards. Everyone has a couple bad cards in their deck, but... Yeah, this is working out real good. All right, we are four turns or three more attacks away from game. And that is hilarious to Castle Walls. Oh my God, she paid more. She paid more than the Castle Walls would have cost you. Holy crap, she's down to 700 life points. She is legit down to 700 life points. She could lose this duel if he draws a beat. He doesn't run beaters. If he draws a tribute monster, he can win this duel. And then we're going to game three. Ah, that's not a tribute monster. Don't play that card though. You'll lose the duel faster. All right, it's all up to luck. He has three turns left. Magic Jammer. I guess that's good to stop Pot of Green, even though she has a full hand. Ah, yeah, my old Director's deck. I haven't thought about that since Tag Force 2. All right, end phase. There we go. Well, I mean, he can use its effect, but at this point it wouldn't matter. She has too many monsters. He needed a beater monster. He has one turn left to get a beater monster or it's over. One turn left to get a beater or she'll just win by attacking directly next turn. He needs one of... Oh! The ultimate play! Dark Hole to destroy Black Pendant to win the duel! This is why she's ranked number two. This is why she is number two in the world. And she's top four in our tournament today. Top four at Duelist Kingdom. I love it. I love it. Shoddy was good. Shoddy was a good duelist, but he's not Prana. I'm glad I ranked them correctly, because if he had won those, I would have been like, shit, I, I did not rank them correctly. All right, Prana Taker, move forward. The last duel of top eight. We have the undefeated Diesel Kane. And I'm not joking. He's, he just does not seem to lose. This guy is very horrifying to watch. The undefeated Diesel Kane will be taking on Bakora. Can Bakora stop this monster, or will it all be for naught? All right. Looks like I got both characters ready to go. I hope you are all ready to go. I just need to, real quick, destroy their faces. Yes. Destroying faces is important. That's fine. It's all good as long as everyone gets to have fun. You can see the decks. No need for no need for surprises. You know we're gonna eventually get to every season, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any secret characters. Every character is someone you've seen before. Prana was the secret character, honestly. I think Prana was gonna be the only surprise I really had for you guys, and you guys did not see that one coming. But for next week, I don't really have any big surprises. Definitely do not. All right, let's see. Ah, uh, Diesel Kane. Yeah, that should be fine. Diesel Kane. <clears throat> We're going all the way. All the way in Yu-Gi-Oh. As far as far will take us. 
Bacora Rio. I think I did that right. Yeah, I think I did that right. Diesel Kane has an extremely good opening hand as Axe of Despair is one of the best equipped spells in the game right now. Oh! Your opponent doesn't care. <laughs> Bacora legit does not care. He's going all in. If you had Heavy Storm, you'd win the duel immediately. Octoclops is now unstoppable at 2800 attack. Literally no monster is going to match that. Morphing Jar is beautiful though. He hit Monster Born and Saku. That's really good. And two UFO Turtles. But he drew the third, which is hilarious. And Chain Energy for a trap. All right. Change of Heart is very good. Holy crap. Just Desserts just for 500. Why not? I still would have saved it. But you know what? You might need space for your new, your new spells and traps. So I'm not going to blame you there. Um, not summoning a monster, though, I don't know if I agree with that. You could have done even more damage. I know you're probably going to set, but unless that set is Manier Bug, I don't really agree. Oh, I, I agree now. Oh my god, do I agree. I'm so excited. I am so excited to see what happens now. Alright, a thousand life points to use Premature Burial to bring back UFO Turtle. They're going in. Giant Germ! That's game. Giant Germ guarantees game. 500 burn, two months. He already lost one. No, just deserves a thousand burn. Bakora takes game one against Diesel Kane, the undefeated. Bakora burns his opponent down. And with a, honestly, he had a perfect hand. I think Bakora only won because he had a perfect hand. I don't think that's going to happen again. I don't think we're going to see that happen in game two. If he didn't start four spells and traps morphing jar, it, it would not have happened that way. All right. So, and chain energy immediately. I mean, come on. Let's go ahead and get into game number two. Diesel Kane has met somebody that actually can defeat him, and now he's scared. Will he be able to stop Akora, or will he just fail? Oh, that is not a good hand. Well, actually, the spells and traps are good, but the, the, the double promotional card is not so good. Those are better after you've already built your field. And Pato Greed. Pato Greed looks real nice. Mystic Tomato is real nice. But Desferal Olymp is one of the better defenders in this tournament. And has no reason to use a slip effect because there's nothing to use. All right, there we go. So now that we've done that, I got a Robin uh, Goblin. 1600 attack will go through. Mystic Tomato will sadly die. Bye, Mystic Tomato. And Mystic Tomato has returned. Chain Energy will go through. And that's 500 extra burn. It's uh, looking looking pretty good to be a Diesel Kane fan right now. And we'll see what happens. Fisher could be used to make sure there's no more search. That <clears throat> that would be quite, quite all right, but it's not going to happen. And Mr. Tomato comes through. And we're just going to end it there. It doesn't look like there's any, uh, any value there. Chain Energy does 500. Okay, 500 burn it is. Now that we've done 500, we're going to get Pato Greed. Okay. Chain Energy on Pato Greed. Pato Greed is not going to work, even though he desperately needs it. He needs a new hand. Even though some of these cards are busted like Dark Hole, it doesn't really matter when you have two bricks. You need monsters, and you're getting screwed on that. Mr. Tomato again will do its job. What are we getting this time? We're getting Giant Germ. I love Giant Germ. That card's really good. The Giant Germ is going to be super solid, and we're going to see how it does against our opponent here. Man Eater Bug, he was waiting. It's here now. Chain Energy, we got White Magical Hat. We can throw away Dark Hole if we're lucky. Saku won't let it happen. We got two Giant Germs, which I think is unlucky. We're going to go in for 450. We're going to go in for 2000. It's not a lot of damage, but honestly, with Chain Energies on the field, everything feels like a lot of damage. Though, I can pretty much tell which spell card he's going to play now. Now that the field is like this. Oh, no, he's just going to let his Monster Advantage take over. Robin Goblin's very good. Let's see what he hits. What have you been holding back, Bakora? You didn't need that card. It might have been good later in the duel, but you don't need that card. All right, we're going to go ahead and draw this card. This is happening live, uh, live wolf power. That's not how it works. If you want to watch it, just wait till tomorrow. It'll be on YouTube. All right, and premature and boss monster. Now that, that Buster Rancher would have been amazing at this point because now they probably would get his boss monster out. Once he clears the field, of course. First, we're going to do the burn. And we're going to do some more burn. Honestly, Diesel Kane's getting a little low. He's got to be careful. He can't play that many more cards. Ugh, he's going to do it. Promotional. So at least he knows he'll always have the monster advantage. He has the biggest monster in the game, on the field. There's no one going to stop that. 
And Morphing Jar gives them both new hands. Change up. It's over. Bakura knocks out Diesel Kane. Diesel Kane will not be going. Diesel Kane is out of here. I can't believe it. Bakura 2 0 him. The guy who's never been defeated, and he got 2 0 by Bakura. Holy crap. Bakura has defeated so many people in this tournament. That is amazing. So, with those characters gone, we're going to move Bakora out of here, and we're going to move Diesel Kane out of here. And let's go ahead and check out our top four bracket. I can't believe he did it. I thought I thought Diesel Kane had this tournament too, the way he's been playing. But it did not matter. So, our top four competitors will be Yugi Muto, Paradox Bros, Prana Taker, and Bakora Rio. Alright, let me go ahead and set this up. Let me find these characters. Yugi Muto versus the Paradox Brothers. Will the Paradox Brothers save this tournament for good old, uh, what's his name? Pegasus? Or will Yugi be able to make it to the finals of this tournament? Alright. Yugi's been to semis in every tournament, but he hasn't been to the finals since the, you know, since the first one. So, we'll see if he could do it again. But the Paradox Brothers deck is so good. It is such a good deck. I'm very excited to see this happen. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this duel started. It's going to be Yugi versus Paradox. I'm very, uh, very excited. Yugi versus Paradox. I need a little time to find these characters, so just give me a second here. Old Cooper's uh, taking a peek. Oh, they're on that side finally, so I can use this face. <laughs> yeah, see, I got the two-face thing going on. Holly is an insane start. Are you kidding me? He got it? He hasn't summoned this monster yet. It's Labyrinth Tank. All right. Labyrinth Tank is coming through. Obviously, we are not resetting the stream, Wolf Power. We're still in the middle of it. And 2,400 goes in. That's 1,000 damage. And 1,000 damage is... Nothing. Jiragumo? Jiragumo luck? No. That's a heavy cost. That is a heavy cost. Oh, God. When I see Yugi's hand, that's why I'm saying heavy cost. Because, like, is that game? Off of that one play? No, because Yugi's a bitch. Oh, no, he can't because this is special summon. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. It was a special summon. Brain Control's nerfed. Brain Control has been nerfed. And that is not going to work. But this is. That's 4,400. Tails, okay, so he's losing all these coin flips, but it doesn't matter if he wins the battle. Okay, he is literally missing every coin flip, but it means nothing. It means nothing. Because he lost so many life points that, I mean, oh, but he has nothing he can steal. Brain control doesn't even matter. There's nothing to work with here. You have to Jirai Jirai, and that is sad if it, it really can hurt you. Oh, Yugi. Yugi, go in defense mode. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Did Yugi just kill himself? I think Yugi just... Oh. They have terrible resource management. The AI in this game have terrible resource management. I, I don't know what to tell you. That is just god-awful. Yugi loses game one. He loses game one. That fusion was lucky, but at the same time, you're going to deal with powerful monsters like that all the time. Yugi, good luck in game number two. Docs, you're doing it for your... Or Paradox, you're doing it for your bros. Do it for that paycheck. Up, oh, Yugi drew one brick. All right, we have ourselves a set. Yugi's got a good hand for beating monsters right now, as long as there's no Jirai Gumo in vault. Oh, Yugi... What a top deck. Oh, man. This guy's on top of the world right now. He's got BLS. The other guy started with a fusion, which won him the duel. Yugi starting with a freaking ritual. All right, attack goes through. Yeah, that was there was very low odds that was going to work. Okay. And this is, uh, this is good. BLS is very powerful. One of the strongest cards in this tournament. If not... No, no, it's... No, Gem there's Gate Guardian. There's... Uh, and we're talking about pure attack points, obviously. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's gone. 
Well, Yugi, great job. You summoned a monster and it's dead. <laughs> you did it. You better get like Pot of Greed or something because you're going to need a lot of stuff. Oh. That top deck's pretty good. That, that's, that's a pretty good top deck. <laughs> I, I did not see that one coming. All right, so... Oh, finally! After all of these duels, Paradox has drawn all the Gate Guardian pieces and all the bull crap that's supposed to brick him up, but has not bricked him up until now. And there it goes. 3,000 damage on top of this other 3,700 damage. That's 6,700 damage. Beautiful. Almost enough to end the duel, and with that last monster in Yugi's hand, I gotta say it's a guaranteed game. It is a guaranteed game. Yugi, use that last monster properly and you win. Don't use it at all and you may lose for some weird reason. Okay, you're weird, but that's fine. Alright, go ahead, Yugi. Go win this duel. It works. And 3,000 from Black Luster Soldier. Yugi takes game number two. We're going to game three, baby. We're going to game three. Who's going to win it all? All right, game number three. Who will win, Yugi Muto or the Paradox Brothers? Will Yugi play horribly like he did in duel number one? Or will the Paradox Brothers brick like they did in duel number two? Let's find out. Got some water in me. I feel a little bit better. Yugi has a weird hand. Oh, he doesn't want this hand. Even though I like Exile Force of Manju, he does not like this hand. All right, King of the Swamp. That means he has it. If he's doing that, that means he already has the fusion, which won him the first duel. It's happening. It's happening. He got the fusion naturally. Giga Tech with the Cannon Soldier. Labyrinth Tank is here. A card Yugi could not defeat. Unshaven Angler is not going to help out in any way, shape, or form either. Morphin Jar is going to get him new hands, but he lost his monster that I said could win. Oh, that is a beautiful hand. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good, though. Still a beautiful hand, Yugi. Absolutely beautiful. Don't worry about that. It's still beautiful. You have exactly what you need to win. Just don't play like an idiot like last time. And you are fine. You have two cards in your hand that you need. And the rest are for backup in case of emergency. Potto Greed. All right. Yep, that's one of them. That's the other one. Perfect. He did exactly what he needed to do. Get rid of the tank. The tank is dead. Yes, Suijin's going to be a problem. But eventually he'll find a way to kill it. Please don't use TT to kill it, though. Because you just, you just spent so much to make this a thing. Alright. Oh, never mind. Use that TT before you lose. He didn't draw a monster. You could just straight up lose. You could just straight up lose. Holy crap. Yugi is one turn away from death. Yugi is officially one turn away from the end of this duel. Brain control comes through, but it's going to cost him too much. Bizarre the fuck? Resource management. He'd even bring back Suijin, by the way. Had the choice. Did not do it. Look what happens! They won't chain call the haunted when you do this, by the way. Play your swords. Holy shit. They don't know how to use brain control very often. Sometimes you get the tribute, which is nice. But very often, they do not know. They are of the dumb. Yugi is still technically in this duel, but I think it's over. I think Yugi is losing. You can't even afford that. You play too bad you played brain control. You could have afforded it. All right, let's see what happens here. It's just end phase. Suijin. Oh, if he gets MST, he could technically get rid of Suijin. I mean, if he draws Jirai Gumo, you lose. I'm just being real with you, Yugi. If he draws Jirai Gumo, you threw, you threw the duel by playing that card in attack mode. But if he doesn't, and you're going ham because he's bricking, because he's getting all of his gate guardian pieces, then that's insane. Will he brick or will he Gumo? I didn't consider the third option of nothing. Rota for trip. Oh my god. Get your guy. Get your guy. Don's a You know what? That might do it. It's all up to if this is too much defense. He attacked with the safe monster for once. Yugi did it. Yugi is going to the finals. Yugi is going to grand finals of the Duelist Kingdom Tournament. It was an extremely tight duel, but Swords of Revealing Light bought him the time he needed. He got Heavy Storm right when he needed it, and he took down the Paradox Brothers. Beautiful. Loved it. Loved everything about it. 
All right, the Paradox Brothers finally meet their end. Yugi Muto had an insane duel against them, and now he is in Grand Finals yet again. He is one of the, uh, we could say it, he is the most consistent AI we have ever had. Despite the stupidity moments, he is still good enough. The next duel will be the world ranking number two, Prana Taker versus Bakura Rio, a guy who's surprising everybody today. His deck is pretty much unchanged from last week. You guys could see it's the same deck and he's just doing better this time. I don't know why. Maybe he got easier opponents for what his deck does. I, all I know is that it's working. Prana Taker though is not a joke. We've already seen how powerful and how fast her deck can be. We'll see what happens. It's time for Bakora versus Prana. Let's go, everybody. Bakora versus Prana. All right, Prana is ready. Everybody's in position. And that means someone's getting a prize. Card destruction is amazing when your opponent loves it. <laughs> Your opponent loves card destruction. I know you didn't know that, but you are a fool, Bakora. This is one of the few opponents you do not want to make them discard. Making your opponent discard when they run Despair from the Dark and Fear from the Dark. Ooh, that's a no-no. That is a no-no. Trap Hole is at least going to hit Zombie Master, which is the best hit. Tra oh, nice, tra nice chain. 1,500 burn. Good chain. Still terrible hand he has, but good chain. All right, 1,400 damage, 1,700 damage. He takes way more. He's in a lot of trouble. He needs a decent monster or a morphing jar, honestly. A morphing jar would be great. As long as he... Well, yeah, he's going to struggle. He's going to... Look, you take this. What's the point? You literally just help her. All you did was thin out her deck for her, and she can get the same monster if she wants. Yeah, see what I mean? You understand what I'm, I'm throwing down now? No, you, you just lost. All right, just get him out. Get him out. He doesn't know how to play. Of course he does. He got here, but... Yeah, no, that card destruction was the opposite of what he actually wanted to do. And Master Kianchi working together with this guy. That's a lot of damage. Ah, you got 50 points left. You can make that work. With 50 points, what top deck could possibly save you? <laughs> All right, get him, get him out of game number one. Game number one is definitely going to the number two ranked character, Prana Taker. Oh, she got her boss to end it with style. Her boss monster, Despair from the Dark, has taken it. All right, Despair from the Dark takes the game. It is time. This will decide who wins, or who goes to Grand Finals. Prado wins this, it's all over. Bakora wins this, there might still be hope, but seeing as his deck is about discarding and her deck is about if your opponent makes me discard, I get to special summon, I feel like he is automatically going to lose. He's getting countered. I feel like he's getting countered. Mr. Tomato's not a bad start with Chain Energy, though. That is not a bad start. All right, let's see what she decides to do. She plays Zombie Master. Very understandable play. But he has his boss in his hand. So if he could just stall out to get his boss monster and she has no good back row, which is going to be hard to see when, you know, she's freaking rank two in the world. Um, we'll see. Get your boss out. I recommend you do that. And do not card destruction. I know normally I'd say card destruction against most opponents. Not this one. Not this one. All right, 2,300 reinforcements. You both died. All right, well, P lost his boss really early. Shit. <laughs> oh, he's in so much trouble. Holy crap. The only damage he's doing is chain energy damage. Oh, boy. Things are looking real bad. That's 3,600 damage. And what does he even have? Does he even have Traps in the Grave for Mask of Darkness to target as if it mattered? No. No, he does not. He has Change of Heart, which can at least crash, which is an interesting idea. Mystic Tomato for damage is a good idea. Um, but he's so low on life points, his Chain Energy has become a, a, a problem. I feel like Prana's going in all the way. I feel like Miss Undefeated until Kaiba showed up is going to be Miss Undefeated again. Yep. Master Kianchi's so good. At least he's stalling, and this won't cost him chain energy because it's from the deck. That will buy him time unless he can get... He needs another boss monster. One of his boss monsters. He draws. White Magical Hat is not going to do it. He could set, but even if he does, it means nothing. It cost him life points to set. Giant Germ is going to at least try to stall, but he does not have many life points left. 
500. She's getting kind of low as well, but not low enough to matter. No! She's smart! She knew she had to hit the germs because they cost too much. It's over! Bakora is going to the bronze place match, but it does not matter because Prana Taker is going all the way. She is going to be in the number one grand final fight. Here we go. I love it. Finally, the AI uses it right. They don't just, like, wait. Ah, oh, thank God. All right, we are going to be moving on to the third place breather match. We're going to find out who gets the bronze medal in Duelist Kingdom. Now, the bronze medalist will either be Bakora or Paradox. Who do you guys think will win? I'm, I'm setting it up in front of you right now. Don't you worry. Now, let's... Uh, I forgot to go to the bracket, though. We do need to... We do need to set it up at the very least. So, over here, we got Prana Taker taking it. And Bakora versus Paradox. Who do you think would win? I say Bakora any day of the week. Paradox r runs Jirai Gumo against a burn deck. What do you think is going to happen? Like, it's that... This one's too obvious. If you bet on Paradox, it's because you, 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 you like losing money. Burn versus Jirai Gumo. They ain't going to be too good. All right, we draw some cards. Granted, this is not the best hand. This is not a very good hand. Especially when you don't even set the Mask of Darkness. At least you got Magical Thorns. Those are good. Those are at least helpful. Master Kianchi is now super powerful, as he's supposed to be. It's getting even stronger. Okay. You definitely will not have the defense there. You definitely will not have the defense to hold that thing off. <gasps> lucky top deck. What a lucky top deck. Holy crap, that's good. That is so good. Master Kianchi, here we go. And Morphin Jar, this is brutal damage. Here we go. Oh, wait, this is still Prana's deck. Whoops, made a mistake. I forgot to change the deck. All right, reset. I was going to say, wait, when did the Paradox Brothers start doing stuff like that? I don't know why I wasn't paying attention. Ignore me. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, that's not your deck, Paradox Brothers. That's, that ain't right. That ain't right. I changed their face. I forgot to change their deck. That's my bad. All right. The faces can stay there, though. Don't you worry. I'll put them in the right spot. Um, let me see. It is them. Yeah, it is them. Okay. Big oof indeed. Big oof indeed. Uh, Bakora. Bakora, you got some people that want to watch you duel. Yeah. Oh, crap. I have to set it up again, too, so it's not uh, me. It's CPUs. Well, hold up. Boop. And we're good. That's all we needed. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and get this started. Para and Docs both get their faces in different spaces, but um, they're using the same deck, basically. So we don't worry about uh, who goes when. In other series, I have split them up before, but in this one, I'm keeping them together for now. Huh. All of a sudden, I'm having trouble finding the character. There he is. There he is. Okay. Now, let's find the Paradox Brothers so we can get this third place match started, right? Sorry about the stall there. My bad. Did not mean to do that. Definitely was a good hand for Bakora, so I feel bad for him. But at the same time, who cares? All right. Let's go. It's going to be Bakora versus the Paradox Brothers for the Bronze Place match of Duelist Kingdom. Makora gets to open up this duel, and I love that hand. I love that hand. That is a beautiful hand. Just set, set, set. Beautiful. Love it. Great job, AI. Finally. Some good AI in this house. All right. How will you answer, Paradox Brothers? Pot of Greed? All right. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Uh, that is not a monster you want to use against a burn deck. I'm just saying. He picked Tails. He got... 3,500 damage ain't going to feel so good. All right. Morphin Jar, let's see what they can get. A little too late for that Magical Thorn, but still good that he has it. Chain Energy is going to cost him just to play defense. And he's down to 3,000 life points extremely quickly. And how will you answer? Change your heart for game. Yep, that's over. <laughs> it's over. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, oh, wait. No, he can, wait. he can hold on. He's not willing to attack all of a sudden. I still would have attacked. I would have risked it all. I would have risked it all. I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a coward. You would have made it so he can only play one card left, and now he... Oh, now you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for being a coward now. Granted, he is going to pay as well because he's using Jirai Gumo. 
And Jirai Gumo, let's see if he has to pay twice. Oh, he's unlucky as hell. I swear, the AI is, like, way more unlucky in this game. So, if Bakora can find a way to do 625 burn, he wins without losing the duel first. Yep, that's how you do it. Yep, that's how you do it. And Black Pendant with Giant Germ is a hilarious way to do it. A thousand burn comes through. Bakora takes game number one. Just wait for the explosion part. <laughs> All right, there we go. Bakora takes game number one. This one was obvious, though. A burn deck versus a deck that, that uses Jirai Gumo is not fair. And here we go. Game number two. Let's see who's going to win it. Maybe they'll get lucky. Maybe they won't play Jirai Gumo. They'll play Labyrinth Tank. Who knows? They did against Yugi. Almost won with that card. That's a pretty good opening hand, though. All right. Pretty good opening hand. Chain energy. See, that's all, oh, but he hit Trap Hole. Damn. I bet you if it was Jirai Gumo, he'd let you keep it. <laughs> yeah, why don't you play Jirai Gumo so he lets you keep it? You'll love it. Oh, that's unlucky. He drew another germ. I hate when that happens. I feel like Master Duel's cheating. Master Duel is a game of cheats. And this is the proof. Every week is going to be Cooper's proof of Master Duel's cheat cheating habits. All right, 500 comes through. Arsenal Summoner is good. Just do 600, but you're going to take five. Uh, Bakor only runs one tribute in this current deck since this is our third tournament with him, and we already know it's really good, but I don't think he's going to draw it. Nope. I was right. I would morphing draw at this point. Oh, well, I guess you can go all Oh, white magical hat? All in? All in, man? All in. Why not? All right, GG's. You were the wrong opponent. Let's just admit it. You were the wrong guy. Unlucky. Unlucky. Paradox Brothers is usually really good. They got to top four for a reason, but Bakora takes the bronze medal because guess what? He's way better. He is way better. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to take a look at our bracket. It is time for the grand finals of our Duelist Kingdom tournament. The winner will receive a secret prize from uh, Pegasus himself. But first, let's take a look. Who will it be? You, well, Yugi Mudo or Prana Taker? Prana Taker is ranked second in the world. Yugi Mudo has won one tournament, the Domino High Tournament. Who will win it all? Let's find out. I'm already ready with the characters. I just need to get this started. I hope you're all ready to see it. Grand Finals. All the marbles. Let's go. Oh, why is Bakora still there? Boop. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, Docs is still there. Whoops. Don't worry about that. Boop. And look at that. They're the right characters now. And here we go. Zombie Master is a horrifying start as that monster is just a good beater that will threaten you. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed gets the best equip spell in the game, and it has no use right now. So why'd you play it? That ain't right. <laughs> that ain't right. Why'd he do that? He threw his first duel against Dox as, or Paradox as well. Yugi threw the first duel against Paradox as well, but he should not throw against this character. This character is way stronger than Paradox. Yugi, that was the best equip spell in the game and you threw it. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh no. Oh my God. Oh God, no. Oh no. Yugi, you need to find a way to kill that monster. You have to get rid of Zombie Master. It's just going to keep the field healthy. Oh, no. Get Mystic Tomato. At least set Mystic Tomato after this. You need to have something to give you more monsters later. Oh, we're in some trouble here. We are in some big trouble here. Oh, 
Man, that's... Oh, man. Of course, Duelist Kingdom is going to be won by someone that had field advantage. That makes sense. That makes too much sense. I hate it. Oh, another Sasuke when it doesn't matter. Oh, yay. I love this game. All right, there it goes. Yugi needs to top deck. He doesn't run a tribute, really. He, he runs BLS. That's why his deck's worse now. He used to have Beast of Tall War. He used to be so good. Oh, that's a pretty good card. Give it to give it to the tomato if you have to. I was going to say give it to Don Zalug, but you do you, man. That is a pretty good card. All right, we got rid of the Zombie Master. Zombie Master is dead. That is the good news. Prana's been getting only back row so far, so we don't know what it is. Could be called the Haunted. Could end the duel with just called the Haunted. Haunted. Mm. That's a pretty good card. That, yeah, that was a pretty good card. Do you have a Mons? Yep, that's a pretty good card. Oh, shit. Little Yugs loses one of the other best equip spells in the tournament, and now he's got nothing. Well, that was a lucky top deck, but I don't think it matters, because once she draws one of her better monsters, then it's over. Okay, not yet, but it's happening. Don't worry. It'll happen eventually. And little Yugs draw. You know what? I would summon that just to... Okay, you don't feel like it. I would summon that just to thin out your deck, because you do not want to... You do not want to draw some bad cards. You're getting so lucky. I don't know how she's even bricked. Her deck is mostly monsters. You are getting so lucky. That, that card's not going to help you in this case. Oh, you're willing to go all in. You know, if she has Call of the Haunted, this was not worth. Oh, look what she just drew. That was literally what she just drew. Now, that uh, didn't matter. That's her boss monster, everybody. That card is horrifying. Despair from the Dark is unstoppable. The only thing in his deck that could have a chance is BLS. And he has no hand to make BLS work. So unless he draws Pot of Greed, it's over. This first duel is over, and it's because he threw hard. That would have been luckier two turns ago. It's too late now. It's too late now for Monster Born to matter. Goal with an Appetite's damn good. 3,000 direct damage. He almost loses in this one attack. Damn, she's good. I, I, You know what? Heavy Storm would save you. You need a Heavy Storm. Oh, wait. You wasted it. I remember you wasting it. I remember what you did with your Heavy Storm, Yugi. You did it to kill your own Megamorph. Because you're an idiot. Alright. We're going to just do that. And that's the best he could do. Is that really the best choice? That was the best he wanted to do. Yep. Yep. Well, game one is definitely going to Prana. I can't see it going any other way. And he doesn't even have the life points to try that, but it wouldn't work anyway. Alright, game number one goes to Prana Taker. Will she be known as the number one ranked duelist and the king of games? Let's find out. I can't believe how bad of a play he started with. It was so bad. It, it, it scared me. But let's go ahead and get into game two and see if Yugi will make the exact same mistake or if he's going to actually fight for real this time and not waste two of the best cards in the game. Oh, he started with a BLS uh, Ritual. That's not too bad. Starting with a Ritual spell is not too bad. Pato Greed. Okay. Malevolent Nuzzler. Wasteland. Okay. That is a lot of back row. Um, Morphing Jar is not a good idea, Yugs. Even though she has field advantage, I don't think you want to give her more. Seven Tool. She really liked that card she drew, which is going to be funny when you throw it away with Morphing Jar. Unless it's one of these Despair from the Dark or Fear from the Dark cards. Alright, attack is about to go through. Attack goes through. Morphing Jar is very scary to use against this opponent. It's just Book of Life. Good hit. Oh, he drew it! He drew the full combo! He doesn't even need the one he set! He drew the full combo! But there's so much back row that I'm scared for him to use it. But he got it. He legit got it. He has to Monster Reborn just to do it though. He had to waste Monster Reborn just to guarantee it. MST, one of the traps. You don't know, man. You don't know, man. Oh, okay. He's saving it. He's saving it. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Good. Good. You know You know this now. You almost wasted your Axe of Despair. I can understand saving your monster. That's fine. Because what if they have Tribute to the Doom? What if they have some bullshit? There's still chances in the future if you draw some floaters that you can get to BLS. Still, this is a really intense duel. Prana is no joke. Alright. 
Down to 26. You can beat it now. Let's see how Sasuke feels about this. Sasuke doesn't feel like living anymore. It happens. All right. She's got Fisher. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. That was a good play. Yep, yep, yep. That is a lot of sense being made. Holy crap. Oh, unless you draw another BLS, you lose, sir. I... Uh... Damn. Damn! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he does have pro attack powers, I swear to god! They're not always gonna win him a duel, but holy crap, are they gonna make him look good? Oh crap! Sorry, I gotta get in position now. I, I, I gotta I gotta set up. I'm, I'm getting ready for this. Yeah, that just happened. Okay. Yugi Mudo. You're gonna lose your card. We know she has Malevolent Nuzzler, but that's fine because you have your Boss Monster BLS, which I thought would be a brick for your deck, but you're making it work. But she has a trap this time. R okay, you can get a good monster with Rota, something to help you out. So Donzalug's a little more tactical. I don't know if it's going to help you when she has a field spell. Her field spell might give you some trouble here. You got lucky that was Nightmare. Wait, if she had Nightmare Horse, what the hell is in her hand? If that was Nightmare Horse, what the hell was in her hand? Oh, Master Kianchi was in her hand. Okay, well, there goes your, uh, there goes your Donza Luke. See, a better monster may not have mattered, but still. Let's see what you top deck, buddy. Let's go top deck. This guy's really good. Yugi is really good. I gotta respect it. I gotta respect it. He, she's down to 50, but the fact that he's top decking like this to come back into the duel, I can't believe it. Oh, yeah! Prada's gonna do it! She top decks Dark Hole! It's over! You can do it, Prana! What could he even draw? He doesn't really run burn! He does not- I mean, he has like one magic cylinder, but other than that, he does not run burn. Yugi Mudo! This is it! One Dark Hole top deck! She actually got it! Oh, I nerfed Yugi! The other Yugi could have summoned a bunch of crap compared to this one. We're one turn away. We are one draw away. Prana Taker is about to be the champ. What? What the fuck? Yugi Muto is going to game three. He top decks the god card. We are going to game number three. Prana realizes she's up against a real one. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Those were top to They both have protag powers. We're watching two protagonists go at it, and it does not matter. We are going to game three. We don't know who's going to win because they both got that top deck potential. Here we go. Who will win the Duelist Kingdom tournament? Who will receive the reward? Who will be going? Ooh, okay. Magic Cylinder is a good start. I would start Mystic Tomato for safety reasons. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, Yugs. Let's see what happens. Prana Taker's pretty damn good. Master Kianchi. Black Pendant's pretty damn good, but that's a lot of burn of Magic Cylinder. Uh, over an eighth of her life, or a fourth of her life points are gone now. Granted, you can't beat that card, so unless you draw BLS, you're in trouble. That could help, actually. That, that actually does help. You pay five, but you gain field advantage. And you gain huge life point advantage after this. Okay, so he's gained field, field advantage. He's, sorry, I'm losing my mind here. He's gained life point advantage. He's wasted Monster Reborn because AI does not have resource management. I don't know why they can't train that. Uh, okay. A bunch of sets, but oh man. Oh man, sets don't work against uh, Sasuke because once you flip it with one of the monsters, no matter what it is, it will die. Ah, that one actually was a really good top deck from her. That's a really good one. She She's actually in a great spot now. She's below half life points, but she guaranteed a tribute. If she gets her mini boss monster, he is screwed. The mini boss is busted. Like, actually busted. It's a boss monster on another character named Reyna in our tournaments. Pot agreed. She's trying. She is trying. She didn't get it. All right, but she can clear most of the field. So I mean, some of the field. So that's good. And he knows that he can't beat that card, so that's also good for her. All right, he drew- No way! He drew BLS! He got his boss naturally! He is literally 
the king. He has to do it. He's the king. BLS joins the field. BL no, don't use your call. Resource management, Yugi. God damn it. You save that for BLS for later in case you need it. All right. Well, here we go. Yugi Mudo has full field advantage. He has his ultimate monster. That is the card I was talking about. That was her mini boss. That would have given him a threat before BLS. Because I didn't think he was going to top deck it. That's freaking stupid. Zombie Master attack mode to build the field by using your effect. No, it's just... Actually, that just thins out his debt. Oh my god. Unless she has a trap. This could be bait. We've seen it before. We've seen it before. Call the Haunted. Okay, this is weird too. Actually, this is terrible. Um, he can't win. He cannot win off of this, but... Actually, things are getting a little lower than I thought. Life points are getting a little lower than I thought, but we'll see. Oh, <laughs> cutting it real close. All right, you hit the... Oh, Yugi! You hit the wrong one. She can tribute now. But at the same time, she needs two summons, so it's too late. She needs to have advantage for that card to work. Holy crap, Yugi. Does this give her what she needs, though? Does she have some sort of combo with it? Oh, she's thinking. Whoa. She's thinking. The AI had to think about that one. What did she just set? If she wow, she had another BLS, finally a brick. What did she just set? She had nothing. Yugi Mudo is the king of games. Yugi Mudo will now receive the prize from Pegasus. Yugi Mudo will now learn the secrets, and Yugi is the number one duelist in the world. Holy crap. I cannot believe it. I thought, I no, like, like, let's put the mask down. I thought giving him rituals would literally fuck him up. I thought, okay, when characters use rituals, they're usually worse. He top decked it every time he needed it. He top decked it. Most people, no, they get freaking screwed up by it. Most characters in this game get screwed up by it. But freaking Yugi, he top decked it every single time when he needed it. And he got exactly what he needed. I cannot believe it. Yugi is the king of games. In our story of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era. It is official. The Duelist Kingdom Tournament is over. Yugi will now be receiving his prize. Of course it will not be here. You'll have to wait till next week to find out what that is. During next week, I always do this, there will be probably a YouTube short or a video that shows what prize was given or what the tournament will be. But Yugi Mudo is the king. He won the Domino High Tournament, he got third place in the Champions Carnival, and he won Duelist Kingdom. Yugi Mudo has done it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That is the end. Honorable mentions time. Yugi Mudo first. Prana Taker, amazing duelist. She will keep second. She is still ranked second in the world. Bakora surprised all of us, right? Bakora surprised all of us. Same deck as last week. Way better results. Um, Paradox Brothers, really good characters. Shoddy, really good. Bandit Keith, really good. Taya Gardner, really good. Diesel Kane, still solid. These are your duelists, everybody. I am so happy. I had a lot of fun, but that that is the end. You'll have to wait till next week to see how the story will continue. I hope you're all excited to find out what the changes are going to be. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all then. This has been Duelist Kingdom.